beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed when you operate by laws your results become consistent regardless of what the opposing forces are you don't approach life emotionally you will fail life is too dynamic for just emotionalism you must approach life from a standpoint of exact understanding there are principles that produce consistent results and god is helping us to understand the first law that we looked at last week was the law of relationships i cannot um i cannot tell you how many testimonies already have come in strange testimonies as a result of this one understanding the fastest way to become successful is through quality relationships it is a law that governs success i said last week that anything money can buy relationships can buy it anything at all anything money can buy relationship can pay for for sure the distance between you and the next level of your life is a relationship who knows you matters in the school of success who you meet matters who likes you matters are we together now these are the mysteries that many well-meaning believers do not know they do not understand and so we pray in tongues we fast we are um, excited but then we fail woefully in almost every other area of life I said a few things about relationships um, that I think is important we pay attention to I said how that relationship is an investment the same way you invest in stocks the same way you invest in agriculture the same way you invest in your shop the same way you invest in education that is how you invest in relationships it will cost you are we together now relationships will cost you your ego relationships will especially from the part of the one who is the chief recipient there are many people whose arrogance will not allow them invest in quality relationships that will build a jimmy used to say that one of the um, greatest things that can happen to a man is to partner with a man who is building something great 50 naira invested in a quality relationship today can give you an estate tomorrow what an investment there are many foolish believers who are not part of anybody's success story there is no future for a man who is not part of anybody's success story someone should be able to say you discerned the grace of god upon him and stretched a right hand of fellowship when the rest could not see it my life is blessed today by the grace of god because i have i i was able to discern people discern potentials discern greatness even when the the custodians of those virtues did not know it see there are certain things you do that will pay you for life one of it is discerning greatness and investing in it through quality relationships i 
gave an instance of people who have been so instrumental in my life these were people who had the eyes to see when there were no physical results and today i owe them partnership to make sure they succeed regardless of what their personal failures are they are the risk they took to believe in me is a debt that i must pay for a lifetime who owes you gratitude because of a quality relationship muslims have this they know this they excel overnight because of the capacity to discern many believers have this ugly thinking that because all of us can approach god directly we don't need men you will always need men for as long as you are alive make reference to my teaching the gift of men you need relationships i told us relationships are advantageous connections advantageous connections there are nonsense and foolish relationships and we received grace last week to get out of it i hope that that grace worked for you during the week because there are relationships that are going nowhere complete um you have to be connected you have to be connected in ministry you have to be connected strategically in business you have to be connected we call it networking in politics you have to be connected you ask honorable here he will tell you you cannot rise no matter what god told you that is your business but as far as impact is concerned god told me i'll be great thank god he didn't tell everybody he told you you must understand the wisdom keys that will make others buy into that vision relationships will require being friendly the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly this attitude of wanting people to be this you are not my class you are not my uh, what do we call it my size you are not my expectation is what is the costly mistake people have made that some are still paying for it today and they will pay forever you must have the discernment jesus understood that as powerful as his agenda was he needed men and so he was able to invest in them regardless of their failures he watched them as they stumbled they fell relationship is not about perfection relationship is about understanding you must know that perfection is not a requirement for relationship replace perfection with sincerity of heart are we learning now please pay attention to what i'm teaching you this is not one of the ways people become great this is the way people become great you can earn a living through relationships there are people who are not doing anything you look at them and you think they are they are occultists or they deal in drugs they have invested in the lives of too many people for them to fail they can sit down at home yet they are all thank you they thank you pays them salary every month without retirement God is giving you an opportunity today to make quality relationships that will bless you tomorrow. It's a lesson I learned from my father, like I told us last week. My father knows somebody almost everywhere. If it's an armed robber, he knows a policeman somewhere who can show up when required. Are we together now? If it's for discount for fertilizer, somebody somewhere. He knows someone in the ministry of Agri. If it's to help you bring your car from Cotonou, there is somebody he knows. What a wise way of living. I watch relationship pay many bills for my father. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not wise. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat myself. If you use only money to pay for everything in life, everything in life is bought, but money is not the only currency. Integrity is currency relationships are currencies heavier and weightier currencies the the least valuable of all the currencies that we use to purchase things in life is finances trust me when i say this someone will not give you money but he will give you what you would have bought with the money he gave you two things access and he took away pain from your life are we together now we must trust God for grace to be able to access quality relationships. Well, 
one of the points that I did not mention last week that I, I think that I must stress before we continue is what I teach in the school of ministry. I teach our school of ministry students. Um, I call it the fundamental law of human relations and it's important. I'm going to state it. I want you to understand there is a key to attracting people to your life. It is the ability to satisfy the highest psychological need of every man. You must know it. And the highest psychological need of any man at all, including you, any man, is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued or valuable, and the need to feel appreciated. Please write it down. Any man will die to see this happen in his life. The highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved, the need to feel valued, the need to feel appreciated. Please write it down and let's talk a little about that. Because many believers think that just because you are born again, relationships will happen overnight. No. People have lost contracts worth billions because they have intelligence but no relationships. And in the body of Christ, we have this ugly way of saying, I don't need anybody. I'm not talking of some negative Godfatherism. Somebody must recommend you somewhere. Are we together now? Come, my dear. Come too. Now, everybody, I want you to give them a round of applause. Smile while you are doing that, two of them. I will tell you why. Just clap for them generously and truthfully. Keep clapping. Don't stop. This is for two of you now. Keep clapping. I didn't ask you to stop. Praise God. God bless you. Now, watch them. What are they both doing? Or what were they both doing? Do you think if you ever tell them I'm a bad man, they will believe you? No. I satisfied in one minute the highest psychological need of any man. By this act, they don't even know what they did. But I gave them an impression of being loved. I gave them an impression of being valued. I gave them an impression of being appreciated. Brothers, let me give you a big secret. Do this, you are 50% gone to get a very good godly lady. Frown your face praying alone and I show you the way to misery regardless of spirituality. Yes time-tested, rock-solid principles. Are we together? The Bible says laughter. Listen, when two people are fighting, the first thing that disappears is laughter. Not love. Love is still there. But laughter disappears. Every time there is restoration, it is backed up with laughter. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. And they said among the hidden, the Lord had turned again their captivity and all of that. You know, Sarah laughed. All who hear this will laugh with me. The ability to keep men loved. The ability to keep men um, feel appreciated. The ability to keep men valuable is the grandest key to establishing quality relationships. When you say this person is likable, whether consciously or subconsciously, their personality or their training has brought them to a position where they present a disposition to people that make them feel loved. Everyone on earth is running away from where they are hated to where they are loved. And that location can be a human being. They can leave you and live with the money they have and live with the access they have to someone else. They, I'm not talking of flattery and lies. By the grace of God, we have a large workforce in this ministry. I am, I am intrigued. It never ceases to amaze me the level of commitment and diligence of the workers in this ministry. And this is true from my heart. Truly speaking. You see, wise people are clapping. A politician is clapping because he understands the implication of this. But many people, that's why you are in, in the school of the spirit. 
why do you think in campaigns anybody just says anything and they clap they are not clapping because they understand what was said they know it's a key it's a key to what you will go home with it's a key to what you might lose never allow your life be the reason for someone's tears and misery at least not with your consciousness there are some of us who have an ugly disposition towards people this lady is so ugly you are just seeing the person for the first time and you're acting that way this lady is so slim this lady is so plumpy this lady is not she can't even speak english she's not my class i show you the person who will pay for everything by himself because years to come you will open the office you are trusting for help and see the the victim of your mockery seated with the biro that can change your life and say the door you came with follow it and go out on wise decisions some of our parents made those decisions and they are still paying for it till today cheap opportunities that they would have reason these are laws they will never be bent they will never change I came from a background where we were told that when you relate with people of influence it affects your spiritual life and for a very long time I worked in that foolishness until I understood the kingdom now I'm a friend of every influential person you can be in the world and not be off the world you can be in a system and not be corrupted by the system the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general you touch me two people punish you from the realm of the spirit and the physical realm yeah, for sure there are many well-meaning men of god who have no one to speak for them and they come and collect a land they spend 200 million naira buying the land investing to raise it to its foundation someone comes and put a big x no prayer will change it it remains there the prayer needs a man the angels roam around the earth did you apply a law that authorizes us to walk where is the human vessel we'll speak to there's no one but you are a prayer warrior you see no truth in the kingdom was designed to replace another they complement are we together now you have relationships you don't pray you will suffer no spirit talks to any man nobody helps you but you can pray you can fast you are a, a student of the word but you don't have strategic connections jesus was a man who understood this principle when it was time for him to get into jerusalem he said go there's somebody who has a coat if he asks you tell him the master has need of it the man did not refuse connections are we together now jesus had relationships he had people he could send do you know what it means to send 72 people to go and return back with loyalty david was a great man ordained to be king anointed but his anointing could not help him he was in a cave called adulam until relationships came certain men came and they vowed they said david we will make sure you are king what if they were lying to kill him the bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor don't forget that scripture in the multitude of men not gold not silver in the multitude of men access to the hearts of men gives you true honor access to the hearts of men gives you true honor are we together now value relationships don't lose relationships to look for money that's that's not wisdom don't lose relationships to look for job look for opportunity it's better to lose a job and keep a valuable relationship because when everyone in your circle of influence is rising you will be blessed by association a message i preached in 2008 that a man can be blessed by association god called abraham alone and lot went with him how did lot get blessed not by any personal revelation as god lifted abraham he lifted him relationships how did jo joseph come out of the pit he did uh, he, he didn't just have gift enough gift alone could not bring him out there was a relationship he established with a wine presser 
it was the wine presser that told the king i remember my wrongs two years ago there was a man who interpreted my dream he said go and fetch him the bible says and the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon i'd like you to pray in one minute bless you darlings and say lord give me the gift of men strategic alliances valuable connections that can become keys let my life not become a padlock to many valuable relationships please pray lord let there be a man to speak for me in the days of adversity let me not fight alone hallelujah please sit down there a particular man of God was sharing his encounter with Bishop Oyedepo. He used to be a pastor in living faith before he went to start his own work, doing a great work for God. And when he went to his father in the Lord, Bishop Oyedepo, and said that, sir, what one advice will you give me? He said Bishop Oyedepo told him, the interpre you know, I'm, I'm giving the English interpretation, but he told him in Yoruba, he said, young man, never fight alone. You will not win. Did you hear what he said? Never fight alone. Nobody fights alone. Ask David. David went alone, but he didn't fight alone. He said, you come against me with your spears and all, but I come against you in partnership to a name. Relationship. Every great man knows that his wealth is tied to relationships. When you see a man mysteriously wealthy, people don't say this guy has a brain. They say he has gone somewhere. He fraternized with someone. Let's hurry up. Walk with relationships and you will be amazed at the doors they will open. Only four people to meeting and accessing any breakthrough you desire. Statistically confirmed. The distance between you and your prayer request is not just a destiny helper away, but statistically speaking, somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. That's how Naaman was healed. A little slave girl who knew a prophet who could take him there and he received his miracle. Hallelujah. Law number two. Take notes if you can. Get the teachings and listen with all your heart law number two that is part of the success systems of god is the law of value another word is the law of difference you can write the law of value slash difference please write it down the law of value exodus chapter 4 verse 2 exodus chapter 4 verse 2 the law of value the law of value those outside if you're with me shout amen god bless you please make sure that the rain doesn't interrupt you i know that you are not having the best of conditions but trust me what you are hearing now will bail you and cause you to bail others praise the lord the law of value it says and the lord said unto him what is that in thy hand and he said a rod verse 2 and he said cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground it became a serpent and moses fled before it go to verse 2 that's just verse 2 that's what i wanted and the lord said unto him what is it in your hand and he said a rod it is impossible to be sent on earth with nothing are we together what do you have in your hand that was the weapon that moses used God will always use what is in your hand. He will anoint you, but the anointing will flow through what is in your hand. The anointing needs a physical channel to find expression. And the conduit that gives it expression to bless you is what you have in your hands. In 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 2, 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 2, a woman was dying. They are about to sell her children because her prophet husband had died and could not um they gave the children as a collateral and when she came to the prophet elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee then he says tell me what do you have in your before they received breakthrough they were all asked what do you have in your hand what do you have in your house write this down 
the law of value states that your value which can be your skill your gift your ability is your difference and creates your rewards your value is your difference and it creates your rewards in the realm of greatness men are rewarded based on their value not based on their needs not based on their desire the idea of something for nothing is nonsense it doesn't exist value your skill your gift your ability which is also your difference now listen a, a wise man dr mike mudok a, a true apostle of wisdom said this he said your similarities decide your comfort but it is your difference that decides your rewards birds of the same birds of the same feather flock together even if they are failing they fail together but when you want to succeed truly speaking there must be your difference another word for that difference is your uniqueness it is your gift that brands you to stand out there are many people in church wallowing in so much ignorance waiting for god to step in and change their lives whereas god is asking them if you will give me the rod my duty is to anoint the rod and cause it to produce supernatural results my duty is to anoint the oil and cause it to multiply beyond your ability when it was time to feed five thousand people nothing produces a harvest of nothing and jesus said look i can't do anything go and look for bread he said feed them they said we don't have anything even a year's wages will not be able to cater for them and then andrew found a young boy with five loaves and two fish and he brought it and the bible says jesus lifted it and gave thanks god anoints your gift he does not anoint nothing you have to understand this there are many people angry at god angry at government angry at parents spouses angry with themselves not knowing that the key to any man's breakthrough has been left to him the day you decide to pay attention to the law of value that day you are ready to exit failure you are ready to exit suffering value your value creates your rewards and there are two dimensions to rewards there is a tangible dimension the money now the cars houses all the physical things that come and there is the intangible dimension the fulfillment that you get the satisfaction the peace that is derived write a few points down your value decides who pursues you ah. your value decides who pursues you you know what i mean by value now your gift your skill your ability whether supernatural whether natural if nobody is following you it's because you have not done anything about your value it doesn't mean you are not valuable is that you've not done anything with it because he gave unto one five he gave unto one two he gave unto one one there is nobody with zero nobody with zero your value decides who pursues you and i wrote something down here i says who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward your reward is dependent on the kind and the quality of men that seek you for your value please learn this many of our parents are angry nobody is seeking them to expect rewards for doing nothing is fraud There are many people who sit down and just wish that things change they get angry at every rich man they get angry at every successful man and they think everyone is diabolic everyone is a crook no no your value sets you apart in the school of greatness your value sets you apart in the school of success please learn this the difference between you and any man you admire 
is value redefined value refined sorry i meant to say value refined enough to be identified and pursued dr mike mudok said a problem is an invitation for reward the problems around you are god inviting you to come and step to a greater level every time you pray for the throne a goliath will stand before you he who kills goliath is the one who sits on the throne you don't desire the throne without the ability to kill goliath so before he arrives you learn how to kill learn how to kill goliath the king put a price tag three things whoever is able to kill goliath number one he will be he will receive the king's daughter for a wife two he and his family will be exempted from tax three he will be given great riches and honor and david said that's a deal let me teach you a great mystery never fight any battle till you know what the reward is there are foolish battles without rewards you sweat and kill yourself and at the end you find out there's no reward never fight any battle until you know what the reward is is god helping us i teach our school of ministry students um certain things and let me let me just borrow this from one of the um i teach them this under finance until there is a problem that you can solve you are unnecessary write this and let me show you the key to what we call inferiority the key to what we call complex this bitterness and hatred we have towards great people there is nobody that was born to just be following others we decide our destinies until there is a problem that you can solve it is unnecessary if you are not sick you don't need benny him if you are not foolish you don't need mike modok are we together now if you are not sick you don't need a doctor you don't need any furniture work you don't need a carpenter as much as doctors like healing people and ministering health to people the only way they continue eating is when they are sick people oh you have a problem go and lie down while you are lying down the victim the person who brought you goes to the cashier doesn't sit down in the office you go to the cashier you pay am i right please yes the doctor sympathizes with you dear lord the god of heaven will help you but while that is happening you are paying the doctor his salary somewhere is that true i see many things in my life i cannot do for myself and i'm shocked how much i pay for it and i'm surprised and almost um, sad that i will continue to pay for it why do you pay someone in a restaurant you don't have the knowledge or the time to cook so the one who can do the cooking collects the money is that true away with this anger at people there are some of us who watch our loved ones do this resentment for people there are people who see men of god with crowds god has honored them and they are angry so 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 man of god so 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 church it's not all about the crowd do you think people are idiots a man can be stupid but a crowd cannot be stupid are you hearing what i'm saying the bible says where the carcasses are there the eagle will gather eagles are wise people don't just sit down and commit their time to hear nonsense no value discover and develop problem solving abilities write it down discover and develop problem solving abilities every one of us here will succeed to the degree to which we train and build and many times receive the ability to solve problems i am passionate the day i discovered this i made up my mind i would never harass god over my my destiny again because i knew that it was in my hands if nobody is looking for you as a music artist it's a sign that you are not solving problems or you have not made it known i will share other laws 
if this guy raises a song now it is because that song is ministering to people he never sleeps he never slumbers who is that he solved your problem the song didn't make meaning to you till the day you saw f the song didn't make meaning till three days to your wedding and you still needed 1.2 million all of a sudden you didn't need to hear Kirk Franklin you took Don Moen he never sleeps he never slumbers and all of a sudden you now found out that ah this is why this man is blessed you that you don't need it now does not mean another person does not need it what a time we live in where there is a need for everything everything good or bad there is a need of course we are believers you don't do bad things but i'm saying every good and perfect gift has a need on earth value value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life is a bailout system to get out of mediocrity get out of failure there are people like Bishop T.D. Jakes. Uh, I was listening to one of his messages and he says there was a woman who made millions simply because of her fingers. Someone saw her fingers and started spotting the rings. The rings of their designer, the rings that they make. And I mean millions. Everything God gave you is an advantage. Esther got to the throne not just because she was bright. She proved that she was bright later on. Her beauty took her to the throne. It's an advantage. Samson could kill the lion. And all of that is an advantage. Everything in your life. Do not allow men, especially church people, to destroy your gift. Now you must be guided to use it. Especially sensitive gifts. There are gifts that are very sensitive. And if not guided, you will lose your work with God just to get money. However, there is nothing God gave you. That is for waste. Are we together now? Thank you. Your destiny is at the mercy of the discovery and the development of your problem solving abilities. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. Be a master at providing solutions and I guarantee you, you will never be ignored. At best you will be criticized by ignorant people and those who are intimidated by you and what you represent but not to be ignored be a master at solving something you must solve a problem don't sit down and roam around getting angry and hoping one day one day it go better that's a wise saying that has never worked for anybody the best way to predict your future is to create it don't sit down and wish and hope and wait you stand up and create it there are people who see men of God and the privilege of the blessings that he has brought, the influence, the prosperity and all of that and people get angry. You know, people just look at a man of God and say, if a man of God is preaching the gospel and then you are this blessed, you see, if you are ignorant, just keep it to yourself so that it's easy for God to help. When you spread it, you implicate yourself the more. The Bible says, even a fool when he's silent is regarded what? There is no man of God who is blessed because he's preaching. Every man of God is blessed because he's providing supernatural solutions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They are spiritual in their context, but they are supernatural. Now, you see, God's reward system is such that whether you sell your value or give it free, for as long as there is a dispensing of value, you must be rewarded. That's why a preacher will not charge you for anything. Yet God will reward him. I will never beg for bread. It's not pride. It's the truth. Because for as long as there is one sinner to be saved. For as long as there is one sick body to be healed. For as long as there is one mind to be transformed. For as long as there is one person desire of an encounter. I remain valuable. That's why the Bible says when you see darkness covering the earth. Rejoice. Your light has come. It's time for you to shine. The presence of darkness is proof that you are an endangered species. And nobody will push you out like that. Say I am valuable. Shout it I am valuable. Say in the name of Jesus. From today. I take responsibility. 
and I create a desirable future by solving problems every job advertisement is a declaration of need by that company we need a secretary what they are trying to tell you is that we have seen a deficiency in our services we need to outsource intelligence whoever can qualify for that receives the job is that true you must be valuable let me give you a key master one thing first you see this issue of deception i am highly multi-talented which of them has brought bread to your table i'm not i don't argue that there are many arrogant people moving around saying i'm multi-talented say what can you do you say it depends on what you want i can do everything growing up i found out i can sing i can do this you see people what do you do you say anything you sell water excellently i mean i mean i are you in real estate yes i am are you in this i am i make hair too i can cook you know you see a restaurant, one side is carpentry, one side they are selling food, another side they are selling drugs and selling gin and selling all kinds of things. You must be specific. Your value brands you. It helps everybody know when to need you. There is nobody you see who does only what they are known for. But like the door to a house, every house has what you call a master door. Everybody say a master door. It is the master door that gives you access to other doors. If the master door is closed, you cannot access the door to the kitchen. You can't access the door to the toilet. So there are other potentials, but there is one that will bring you to notoriety. Are we together now? Learn this. Don't just tell people I can do everything. I, then it means I don't need you. I don't need you. If I want to sing, I need the worship team. If our sound is bad, it's yours begging the technical. Help us. If we need order, we need the protocol department. If we need media capture and then following with our social media platforms, we need the media department. Any department we don't need has not been created in this ministry. The day the need arises, we create it. Just like you. You roam around and there's nothing to draw men to you when jesus showed up the bible says in the book of mark one two three when you read he said all men seek for thee all men seek for thee they don't seek you just because they love you the world is full of people who also want to achieve their goals whoever is valuable becomes the center of attraction miles munro dr miles munro gave us a very beautiful analogy and this is how he put it he said during um, now let me use it in our context Nigerians when it is rainy season everybody starts looking at a mango tree happy and expectant the same mango tree you will sit under and gist for hours and argue and not even know the color and look at everything but the moment it is rainy season and the mango fruit start coming out are we together people come and they can climb trees and do everything you know i had to cut the mango tree at my place because in the night there were all kinds of things you would hear someone walking literally just climb the tree and trying to catch the ones that were trapped you know and all of that early in the morning five o'clock god is my witness you hear people running once it rains or wind shakes the place in like 10 minutes somebody's around with pocket fighting and i said no i can't continue so i took away that value from that environment and naturally the people went somewhere else listen this is how nations attract attention they come up with policies that create problems then when it creates problems you come and meet them and say i thought i told you let's negotiate and you refused now there is a problem and you need us here are the terms may you be so valuable that no price pays on you becomes too much that you are so valuable be as valuable as oil look at oil during scarcity when you want to put fuel gas you are on the queue it is your money yet you are still begging somebody helps you to pass and you say thank you sir yet you paid that's called value that you are so valuable that people bless you and call it a privilege are we together now I aspire as a person to be so valuable to the body 
serving the purposes of the kingdom within the the dimension of the grace and calling he has given me that no level of physical and spiritual reward it is my desire that nobody will ever bless me one day thinking he did me a favor value value somebody sowed a seed into my life one time and in two days something dramatic happened in his life and he called me say apostle i have another one i said that's it it's not that i need the seed but i said you see that nobody leaves what works human beings are not stupid when people change for, from uh, they change formulas and all of that is because it's not working the day you shake hands with somebody how are you sir and he says good morning and from that day people come and queue in his shop the day you are passing say bros come now i have free your god for you because he has identified like um obededom that something was introduced to his environment that brought him an advantage the law of value i learned this law it changed my life by the privilege of god's grace this is what is helping us as a ministry the more valuable we become to the purposes of god the agenda of god and the needs of men the more we continue to rise a day will come when we will wave the flags of nations tens and hundreds of nations why because our value would have extended to those territories they will come yes they will come for as long as there is sickness in the world they will come for as long as there is oppression they will come people flow from the realm of ignorance to where there is knowledge pray one prayer as we continue lord whatever has made men ignore me whatever has made my helpers ignore me i receive grace to work on myself don't just blame the devil and keep insulting people my father didn't do this my mother didn't do this outside inside online pray make me valuable make me valuable so valuable shakata in the area of designs make me valuable as a tailor let me not be a tailor that is when every other professional tailor rejects then they come to me as a caterer let me be so exceptional as a businessman let me be so exceptional as a student let me be so exceptional let my education center let my school be so exceptional that men will want to come there to identify with it let the anointing on my life be so exceptional that gentiles will run to that light and their kings to the brightness of my rising lord let me have something to give my generation i'm tired of escorting people i'm tired of competition pray i'm tired of hating people and blaming people there is something you have put within my spirit that can give me a place among the great there is a place you have put upon my spirit that can compel the loyalty of my helpers give me grace to be valuable grace to be valuable hallelujah are you learning something never forget this your reward is tied to your value your reward listen we were not designed to live off miracles a miracle is a sign that something went wrong and god is stepping supernaturally we were designed to live by principles principles a miracle is god's intervention but you cannot you can get miracle money but you don't you don't live with miracle money you live with principles you can get the act of god's mercy step into your life in a season but if you want to be great it has to be by laws are you getting blessed the lord is leading us he's helping us you may look weak now but take what i'm saying seriously and watch your life grows follow these laws and you watch your desires follow you like the animals came helplessly to the ark of noah you may not believe me but believe the truths i'm teaching hallelujah the third law that i want to teach you connecting with the second law now 
wherever we can stop tonight there's a lot to cover is the law of competence and excellence the law of value talks of recognition of what you have but the law of excellence competence and excellence the fourth law that governs God's success systems please listen carefully Proverbs 22 29 please give it to us media very fast the law of competence everybody say competence say excellence one more time say competence say excellence now if you're a believer read that scripture projected let's read together one two read seest thou a man aha uh -huh, diligent in his business he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before mean men no specific person no specific person seest thou a man not the man any man any man who chooses to assume this posture of diligence that produces competence produces excellence remember we define terminologies excellence is maintaining is is the highest producing the highest quality at your level excellence producing the highest quality at your level excellence means to surpass ordinary standards I read a book years ago called the enemy an enemy called average by john mason i think that was 2005 or so and that book changed my life forever because you see many of us especially africans were born in this lifestyle of mediocrity and when we give our lives to christ sometimes if not correctly taught we think that what we have come into is a license and an excuse for mediocrity mediocrity means living in a common realm having no passion for surpassing the ordinary there is nothing mediocre that eventually becomes great it may not be bad but it will not bring you to greatness the law of competence write this down competence and excellence are magnets competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources we're on our way to better days. You see us sing this song. We're on our way to better days. It's not just a special number. It's the truth. We're on our way to better days. Have you learned to use that magnet called excellence? Discovering your potentials. Obeying the law of value. Is a good start but in itself will not activate success systems in your life it is value that is excellently dispensed value that is communicated with competence what is competence thoroughness predictability of results there are many anointed people who are not competent competence in anything there are business people who are not competent there are students who are not competent there are workers who are not competent your certificate gives you a job your competence promotes you your certificate gives you a job and that's where it stops it is competence that promotes you every time a company is about to be downsized who do you think are the ones that they send away the ones that the company perceives to be less valuable in terms of competence discovery is important but development qualifies you to sit with the great discovery is important but development refining is what qualifies you to sit with the great you don't sit at the seat of greatness simply because you discovered your potentials 
That is important. But alongside the law of value, knowing your difference is not alone, enough. Building your difference to a point that is worthy of reward is what we are talking about. Um, someone was over, I think he was the head of department, um, media. He was over at my place and, um, you know, he was served a very sumptuous, very, very sumptuous meal. And, you know, I was just watching him serving himself and helping himself, adding this, adding that, adding chicken, adding fish, adding this, and I was watching him. And then I told him, I said, if this were a restaurant, how much will you pay? And then he looked. I, I, I was just reminiscing on my teaching tonight. Listen, please help me with this. How much is this? 20 naira? Let's say 100 naira. Let's use a round figure. This is 100 naira. Will you pay 1,000 naira for this? I'm not talking of free will donation. Will you go to a shop and pay 1,000? Why? What will you say if I sell this 1,000 to you? It's too much. Because you feel that this is valuable, but not to that degree. Is that true? If your school fees is 30,000, you may not complain. Even if you complain, you may just pay it. There is no school that has if you go take your child to a school and they tell you that school is 100 naira will you admit your child there i know you are crying recession but you carry your heart and child except if you just got somebody from the street but you took your child how much is the school fees and you're about bringing out your checkbook and, no 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 sir it's 100 naira 100 naira for what for the entire three three um, um what they call them three terms first term second term third term say that's how we are in this school automatically you already know what is going to happen to the destiny of your child there are times that the prices of things are high but we are happy paying for them because we know that there has been development to a level that will commensurately pay you is that true yes reject mediocrity write it down i reject mediocrity you have to write it personalize it don't say we reject this is not a corporate thing you must reject it personally there are many believers who are not competent apostle i make her pray for my my um my what, what they call my salon someone comes to your salon you burn their hair you charge high, you finish late, you are frowning, heat is killing them there, and close to close to the um, the television is one bottle of anointing oil there. Very dirty, dusty around. Dirty place, the gutter is smelling, there's a bottle of minerals close to that gutter, and you say, please, pay 100 naira for it, and the person says, what, what is your idea of me? Just because I came to spend three hours to make my hair, Praise God. People have traveled from region to region to go somewhere and be able to buy certain things because they are looking for quality. Let me tell you, not everyone is afraid of quality. There are people who have conquered price. What they are looking for is quality. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Oh, but if I put quality, everybody around my area cannot pay for it. You don't need everybody. One person can equal 200 mediocres. One person who likes you. Pastor David Ibiome was sharing and saying that he noticed that the, those who sold his clothes, they will collect measurement of 11 and sold 30. He said they, they will never return back to him again. But then one, they would sew three clothes, the same measurement. One would look as if, you know, and then the other one, he said, what sort of people are you? You are not competent. And some of them were members of his church. He said, no, I love you, but I can't use you. Then he found somebody who charged twice the price. And he looked at the person. And he said, why are you charging twice the price? And the person says, sir, I know what I can deliver, according to him. And he says, okay, I'm impressed. Let me give you a trial. He said, when he came back with that clothes, David Ibiome said, that's it. You are the one who will sow my traditionals. Now, one David Ibiome is worth some cities. I think I like that kind of business. Why labor to get two, two, two naira from everybody? 
when I can get one million from one loyal person. Don't allow environment make you compromise on quality because impressions, impressions, impressions are important. You give a negative impression about your shop. The day you change, people will still think you are like yesterday. You now went for a three months tailoring school and now you have become a pro tailor. But everybody looks at you and says, don't waste your time going to that woman. Do you know, God is my witness. I once saw a wedding cloth, Ejimi, wedding, a lady's wedding gown. I never would believe they sold that thing in Nigeria. I thought it was maybe, you know, London School of Tailoring or one of these um, Gucci or Versace and all of that. And they told me a, the tailor made a tailor in the north here. I mean with, with a level of precision. Now, those people are not noisemakers. You may not see them on Facebook. But they are the types, if you call them, they don't even pick your call. If you are ready to spend 500000 on a wedding gown, get to them. In a year, they, they sow for 100 people only. They are building estates and other people are there saying say it depends on your level which type if you want for ten thousand i can sew and then a night to the wedding that's when they bring it and it's raining you can't wash it they bring a white wedding gown that is smelling fabric is bad is torn they say you know they, you didn't finish paying yourself you you spoil another person's wedding simply because of incompetence and he said please if you know any other person bring no no nobody does that listen excellence is self-marketing excellence is self-marketing being excellent to one person is the same as attracting hundred people the money you will use to attract hundred people can be saved in creating an excellent outcome Everybody say excellence. Look at me. There are many of us right now. What you are writing on, what you are writing on is a piece of paper that you could not even tear orderly. That is a piece of paper is an issue. But the discipline to just tear it and create synergy. You don't have that patience. You just tear everything. And you are writing something that will change your destiny. You are not excellent. You see, excellence is a culture it starts from your life you don't try to pretend it outside you eat you don't wash the plate you are not excellent you wash the plate you don't throw away the dirty water you are not excellent you use the same soap to bath wash clean mop or the same rag your sponge case for your shoe you are not excellent are we together don't laugh at anybody god is speaking to you you enter to bath like i was teaching school of ministry students some of you bath in one minute you they ask you a question you are answering it while you are bathing you will think you are flushing the toilet you just hear Sha! and you are out no you are not excellent sir you are not excellent are we together wearing one boxer for two weeks you are not excellent wearing one torn singlet smelling it to see if it's still usable you are not excellent ironing clothes with sweat on it and seeing it rise and you are, you are not excellent are we together you are laughing ask those who this thing has cost them so much do you know just there are people someone like me i eat emotionally before my mouth touches it presentation matters as much as what it is you don't cook nonsense and say the most important thing is your body no why did god give me eyes <laughs> are we together now you have a restaurant i carry your spoon somebody took gary with the spoon and you obviously they were washing it in a hurry and you see the trace why should i remain there let's tell ourselves the truth tonight success systems there's oil all around. They have to call you, Madam, come and clean this table now. You just send one lady who frowns around, comes out as if everybody has offended her, just pushes the rag across the table. <laughs> 
pours the water on you and goes madam give me rice beans towel and one other part she goes to go and bring swallow no attention to details after 20 or th i'm showing us little things no attention to details iron someone's cloth you go and burn the cloth you don't know how much the cloth is i say sir uh, i i decided I, I remember one guy who wanted me to start um doing dry cleaning with him and so he said he wanted to do so i said okay let me try you i gave him a suit he returned it after like one month i don't know what he did on it i said thank you i gave it to somebody and i knew that even him he knew that he had lost that opportunity forever let's stop saying god is not looking down on us i'm showing you how god comes but we cannot receive because we don't understand his systems one day i will cook for the governor who are you with what you are doing now you are not training yourself the governor is not an idiot the government house is not a zoo if you want to cook well you must be competent don't throw anything at anybody Are we together now? How about Babas? How about Babas? How about Babas? There are people who pay as much as four, or 5,000 just to barb their hair. You think they are lavishing money. They are not ready to risk their hair. Are we together? You bring out a clipper. You don't even know whether it's sharp or not. You injure someone. All around because you are barbing. Don't don't love these are ways that anything can take you to the top if it's excellent. It's not just shell, it's not just oil and gas, it's a determination to be thorough. Pay attention to details, listen to the instructions. No assumption. You met somebody god is introducing a great businessman to you about to take a risk with you he says call me by 2 p.m tomorrow it's by 1 30 you sleep are you a serious person you get up and start ringing his phone by four i say no you have to pray apostle this guy is not picking my my call why should he pick your call maybe that guy is in church for evening service maybe he's a deacon you are ringing by seven you are ringing his number he told you call me by two someone tells you i want to give you a job i want to help you come by two you stroll carelessly by 2 30 and say uncle just to let you know i'm around you know you won't get the job because some jobs are the, the lives of people are dependent on it excellence you have one shoe you polish it you comb your hair well don't dress around like a thief going to the house of god you look smart say i'm not i'm not a man of god it doesn't mean you should be like that you are smart it's not about having money excellence your notebooks you bind them well if they are torn you fix them you fix your bible are we together now your environment is neat very neat we come into your kitchen we see it neat we come into your toilet we see it neat we come into the living room we see it neat that's excellence don't say we were not trained that way that's why god is bringing you koinonia is a school and you are learning are we together is god helping us the law of competence how to be competent quickly now that i've challenged your mediocrity how do i become competent number one you must have a reference you cannot be excellent and competent when there is no reference a reference means an individual that reflects your aspiration there must be someone even if you plan to surpass that level there must be a reference oh i want to become a great worship minister i have a reference like don moen now that gives you a standard to start climbing the ladder when you become like don moen you now earn the right to go higher but not when you are down i want to be great like who i'm unique oh yes you are unique but you need a reference the bible said ask for the ancient parts that means someone walked in it before you 
Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You must have a reference. Look at me. Hold on, Mike. If you do not have a reference for ministry, for business, you want to become a great man of God. Like who? Who represents a model? Because that's the life you are going to understudy. That's going to be your case study. I want to become a business mogul. Like who? You just mentioned one hilarious name. How many videos of that person do you have? Have you ever gone for a seminar organized by that person? No. Competence and excellence is based on a reference. I always challenge every department in this ministry to have a modern ministry whose, whose, um, whose, who reflect their aspiration. So every department has a reference that they can look up to for inspiration. References are important because we draw inspiration from them. If your reference is small, your outcomes will be small. You see, when your references are people of mediocrity, you will hit it too fast, even when you don't do much. And so you will not aspire to rise. Number two, how to be competent. Submit yourself to mentorship. Now that you have references, I told you last week that mentorship and training is the only way to be successful. Trust me when I say this. Mentorship is not listening to a man. Mentorship is submitting yourself to build the character, the traits, the habits, the principles, and the secrets of a man. Submitting yourself to build the character, the traits, the habits, the principles, the secrets. I take it again. The character, the traits, the habits, the principles, the secrets of a man. That's what you do when you are, when you are receiving mentorship. It's not just to go and package yourself for nothing. No. You sit down. Why is this person getting these results? What is he doing that I'm not doing? Why does Benny Hinn stand on stage and 40 people rise up on the wheelchair and he has not started praying? Is it that God is unfair to me? God, you called me to have the healing anointing. But what is it about? What's the difference between me and Benny Hinn? Then you study his prayer life. You may never have that close access to him. So you take advantage of his materials. You know, a lot of people call me and say, Sir, I want you to mentor me. Can I be calling you anytime? I say, no. He says, Sir, so how do you mentor me? I said, that's why I'm teaching. I'm teaching all the time. There's Koinonia Radio. Our teachings are free. Listen, they say I have it. I say, that's why you will never learn. Mentorship is not listening to a radio program or a TV program. I've shared with a school of ministry students. There are times it takes me three days to watch a one-hour video. Three days to watch a one-hour video. Because almost every two, two minutes I'm stopping. This man said this. I have to listen. That's mentorship. You submit yourself to read between the lines. Ah, he just said the power of God will touch somebody outside and somebody was shouting. How did he know? Was that the word of knowledge? Man, this guy is powerful. That's excitement. That's not mentorship. There are too many excited people who just see results and don't know the secrets. I was told, I don't know if it's true or not, but I was told one great man of God, Bishop um, Abioye, that one time one man said he wanted to, you know, find out the secret of his prayer life. And he said, fine, let's pray. And that they prayed after a long time. The guy was yawning. He wanted to sleep. And then Bishop Abio told him, okay, we've given thanks. Now let's pray. And the guy was almost dying. <laughs> if that story is true, that guy is not wise. What do you think the anointing is? You think the anointing is a charm? Even a charm, go and ask a herbalist the price for a charm that can throw a man down. Not give him miracles. Just push a man against gravity. The secret of great men is in their stories. Pay attention when a great man is giving you examples. Pay attention when a great man is giving you stories. 
they are trying to bring a principle many people laugh at the stories parables and mysteries enshrined in stories you can see the stories and laugh and be raptured by the humor of the communication and miss out on the meaning of it i'm not against laughing be happy but you must be able to see when others are looking are we together submit yourself to mentorship number three understand believe and live by the principles learned how to be competent one you must have a reference to submit yourself to mentorship three understand believe and live by the principles learned it's not enough to just say i know he told me this understand what you have been taught believe what you have been taught let me tell you something i have discovered something with the body of christ many people who supposedly submit themselves to mentorship don't believe half of what they have been told when you don't believe a man don't ever listen to him for mentorship because you'll be wasting your time you have a right to vet a man and do you believe this don't sit down and you are not complete you are not producing any result and you are there and someone is teaching on the anointing i say no i don't just because he made a mistake with one greek word he said no i have the the modern lexicon or okay? god who who did you get out of a wheelchair whose eye opened that's the summary of this thing we're talking about whose eye opened whose life changed you prophesied on somebody everything was wrong sit down sit down don't just say the person does not have faith you are you are you are, you are messing up if it's not working it's not working sit down when i see people who communicate dimensions that are not at work in my life even if i don't exactly understand what they are saying i sit down and try to discern the spirit of what they are saying because sometimes it may be that they are not able to communicate maybe a businessman a smart businessman who is let's say um, he's somebody who is not very he just used street sense but in that street sense he kept acquiring principles now he may be sharing business secrets he may not intelligently articulate it like someone who went to harvard business school will but you can discern the spirit of his communication not to sit down and say Kai, this carpenter now wow but he's the number one carpenter do you know why rich people are coming to him maybe the man every two two months he will package a seed and squeeze it and take it to his reverend that may be his edge while you are listening to him one day in passing he will reveal a secret and say that's my pastor let me tell you something see that man that man is powerful say talk to me say i used to the only thing i used to make before was coughing and then one day he called me prophesied to me now i make bed i even have a timber shed now he did not say it intelligently but you have picked a principle years ago i was in abuja and i took a cab when i took a cab we we're discussing with the driver because sometimes i crack jokes with them say ah oh guy you poor enjoying this ah my charmer and abba i'm not enjoying and then he, we're talking about money and then later the man said oh god you know say this money eh that the thing has a spirit and then i started listening to him he said do you know that he tried to build a house in abuja he tried and tried could not build but he said he saved and took the money out of Abuja and in four months he built. I discerned something that guy was saying. He was communicating a deep mystery. But because of his, the barrier in communication. Are we together now? Listen. If you don't have results in your life, you are not a colleague to the person who has results. Sit down. Humble yourself. Believe learn if you don't believe it will not work for you you don't only believe the principle you must believe the communicator are we together now yes. a woman didn't go to school she's taking care of 10 of her children and you are there i am a lawyer i'm a barrister and the madam is saying let me tell you this i flogged my child from age one to seven when my child was in my womb i was anointing my womb with oil now he's not saying you should repeat the anointing discern the mystery of what she was saying she may now tell you that i took one night vigil for all my children before they were born you are now learning secrets 
you apply the same thing and change any dull head in your life to an intelligent child no matter what the limitations are listen one of the greatest ways of receiving mentorship is observation don't wait for a great man to tell you everything there are people who look and say ah, is this all there are people who have never seen but observe you observe when the power of god is about to come how does he behave observation observation jesus was speaking to them and saying, you can look at the clouds and through observation know that it is rainy season you can learn a lot through observation every time you enter the presence of a great man be observant you see him keeping laws oh somebody disappoints him and he doesn't quarrel the person in public he says okay that's all right we'll go and see oh oh god the poor man now wants to kneel down and says all right let's go you are learning you are the one who quarrels your house help in front of everybody and before you know it they start calling the house help the name you are calling you insult your wife in front of everybody don't mind this useless woman very soon your friend will say that's why he's calling you a useless woman because you are making men reflect what you are communicating principles say i receive grace to be observant say it again i receive grace to be observant and then number four the fourth way to be competent remain connected never disconnect from those who lift you up it's foolishness a time may come in your life you feel you don't need them again in terms of the dynamics of what they are teaching you but that's when great men fall no matter how tall a skyscraper is it remains for as long as he's still connected to the ground there's no skyscraper that says i am i am 500 meters into the air i can disconnect no sir are we together yes are you learning let me give us two more laws and then we'll be done is God helping us? <laughs> you know, look at this. Let me tell you this. If you're a businessman, listen twice to what I'm teaching you. And everybody's in business, I hope you know. Business is simply solving a problem for an agreed reward. It's not wearing suits and sitting in business class. Business is solving a problem for an agreed reward. Simple. Most men think men of God don't know anything about business, you know. When they look at men of God, they just feel we are just daft people. You are praying and fasting. You don't know anything. See, see, still this pride we are talking about. What do you think managing people is? What do you think managing resources are? What do you think multiplying them is? Are we together now? The law of the mind. Number what? Number four. Am I right? Five. Thank you. Number one is, I'm the one teaching, listen. Number one is the law of relationships. Am I right? Number two, the law of value. Number three, the law of competence and excellence. Oh, that's true. How to be competent is part of it. Number four, the law of the mind. Jesus. The law of the mind. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Is God helping us? As I teach you, you should be seeing the loopholes. What laws you are not keeping. That is deactivating the systems of success in your life. 23 verse 7 Proverbs. For as he thinketh in his heart. It's interchange with the word mind. So is he. Not so he will be. As you are thinking, you already are. The Bible creates your, um, references your physical reality to what is happening in your mind. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart with all diligence. It says, for from out of it are the issues of life. Guard it. It is a guard your head. It is a guard your legs. Guard your heart. You don't cover yourself the worst is you catch cold and mosquitoes can disturb you but you 
don't protect your mind, you will fail in life. Listen, being filled with the Holy Spirit does not negate the need to transform and build your mind. The law of the mind. What does it state? As it is in your mind, so it will be in your life. As it is in your mind, so it will be in your life. Trust me, your physical reality is a merciless reflection of the summation of your understanding, your thought patterns. As it is in your mind, so it will be in your life. A great mentor says you become what you think about how true you become what you think about your life is a reflection of your most dominant thoughts your life is a reflection the quality of your life today is a reflection of your understanding about God about life the quality of your life today is a reflection of your paradigms are we getting blessed the mind is a mystery that I want all of us. We've had several teachings here on the mind. But it's important for you to understand the mind. My life changed. This law alone changed me like day and night. The law of the mind. That my, the quality of my life today is a reflection of my mind. Your mind is a miracle. Your mind is a gold mine. It literally is. Literally is. Literally is. Write this down. Your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden. Your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden. Full stop. Write it down. Your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden. It will grow any seed planted and watered. It will grow any seed that is planted and watered. In our Greek science, they teach that there are several kinds of soils. I don't know if they've discovered others, but as far as I remember, they taught loamy soil, clay soil, what other one, sandy soil, and every other auxiliary one that comes as a combination of them. Your mind is, in, is a perfect garden sustaining the ability to grow any seed that is planted and watered no matter what is planted in your mind if it lands on that soil and you water it and i'll tell you how to water it it must grow unfortunately it does not grow in your mind it grows in your life you plant it in your mind it grows in your life look at your life the summation of everything in your life your finances your peace your understanding, your excellence, your relationships. Everything in your life is a sum total of your paradigm. It's an uncomfortable truth. Many people will not want to admit, but it's true. Apostle, nothing is working. No friends in my life. No favor in my life. There is an inaccurate understanding or a poor understanding you are sustaining. Listen your ignorance is a seed you can plant it in your mind and it will bring you a bumper harvest let me tell you what ignorance produces pain frustration disappointment these are all harvests of the seed of ignorance it's rainy season all the time in your mind your mind has no dry season it's rainy season all the time capacity to produce anything there's no barrenness with the mind. There's only wrong seeds planted in the mind. And I'm standing here only because you made, you made a way, made a way. When our backs were against the wall and it looked to see it was over, you made away and we're standing here only because Sing you one more time. made you away. made a way when our backs were against the wall and the love to sing it was over you made a way and I'm standing
miracle that can happen to you outside of salvation is not the healing of your body listen carefully there are people with no legs who are changing the world there are people with no eyes who are changing the world but there is nobody with an unfruitful mind who can change the world the worst thing that can happen to a man is not his eyes missing not the legs not the mouth there is a scientist i don't know his name who had a a disease that literally crippled him yet he's one of the smartest scientists in the world nothing else in your life is what crying for till you lose your mind the worst sickness in life is madness not blindness not blindness madness if i give you one billion and i make you mad have i blessed you please talk to me yes there are people who have built empires in fact there's a book like that empires of the mind and it's worth reading very powerful book you have to learn and understand this mystery called the mind many believers are not interested like some of you probably are as i'm talking now you're oh mind bring another thing now look you will never be great i'm sharing you with you the principles that i have lived by you have seen the anointing and the grace of god upon my life i'm showing you the other sides to these success systems because many people just think oh these people are just privileged no sir these are systems they make your life and your outcome predictable You never truly rise above your mindset. You never truly rise. Underline the word truly. You never truly rise above your mindset. You may jump above it for a while, but I assure you, you will never truly rise. Your life will only rise to match the level of your mindset, no matter how you manipulate it. Your mindset is what shows the quality of your life i wrote down something here i want you to listen to i don't know if you can have the speed to write it but listen first if you attempt to change your life without changing your mind your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back and reflect the level of your mind you know how you pull a rubber ring you can pull it and it becomes elastic and you think it will remain like that the moment you push it what happens it returns back that's how many people are if you attempt to change your life change your shoe <laughs> change your suit change your hair change watch change cars and all these mundane things that we use around to prove that you are successful you attempt to change them first without changing your mind your mind will cause them to disappear until your life returns back to the level of your mind see i have seen this thing work too many times have you i've given this example here i believe have you seen someone that you used a dress for one year and people will think you just sold it because the dress is reflecting the quality of your mindset that maintenance culture of excellence reflected on the dress carry it as a gift and give a tongue-talking careless believer who is not prepared to work on their minds give them two weeks you know what you see the shirt will reflect their mind they won't iron it they won't wash it the color will change they won't care it will tear they won't sew it later on you will check and see that they now use it to wash a car two months Hollandis that you spent money to buy you decided to sew it in two months they are using it to wash motorcycle that's the mindset so that person's mindset changed that fabric to come back to the level in my life i've had the privilege by the grace of god to bless people financially usually they come and they tell you sir i have an idea i have this if you only give me this money i will never return back and i look at them and i say what is your idea of success because you think all you need to be great and i'm correcting many of us here right now because there are people about to make that mistake you think all you need is hundred thousand two hundred thousand if it left you it is not your hand that took it away it's your mind that took it away so you must correct something in your mind first before having it back are we together now 
the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the most difficult person to help the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the moment you find a man who is resistant to change in terms of mindset you have found a man who has defined himself as being hopeless I have seen great people rise and didn't pay attention to rise first in the mind I've seen people inherit money I've seen people win lottery millions of dollars and their mindsets created behavioral patterns that drove everything away from them having physical things without a transformed mind is like having a jeep without knowing how to drive it's not if you will have accident it's when are we together now you can manage to navigate your way driving nonsense and arrive safely and then one day you decide to pack passengers and travel that's the day you die you see that and you can die the death of a fool listen packaging without mental upgrade will lead to frustration write it nigerians packaging without mental upgrade will lead to i was almost saying like lead to nigeria will lead to frustration packaging you know what we call packaging paying attention to the physical form now it is important appearance is important appearance is the seed for acceptance so don't don't ignore appearance is important because it is the seed for acceptance joseph had to shave his beard to stand before pharaoh so acceptance is the seed i mean appearance is the seed for acceptance however packaging having physical things around you now listen many of us young people have a very big there's a big mistake we're making everybody wants to buy a car everybody wants to buy a shoe oh that great man is wearing Versace is wearing Gucci wearing Louis Vuitton and me too I want to get all these designers I want to and then you now try and save and save and beg and steal and raise money and then buy the shoe buy the hair buy everything so physically you look let me tell you something a great man and a great name are not the same if your name is greater than you you are in trouble you must rise to get to the level of your name i will make your name great does not mean you are great it's, it's a disappointing thing for your name to be greater than you god makes your name great as an act of mercy so that you can quickly catch up are we blessed the law of the mind there's too much packaging packaging i know people who years ago as students were behaving like bankers a student will buy a suit of forty thousand. a student will not cook no 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 i don't have that time i don't uh, i don't like okra soup do you have that option no whoever pays creates the rules you cannot somebody cannot pay and you say i don't like okra there are people who try to live a life you have not built your mind there are so many people holding briefcases today arrogant people you see them they move around wearing suits loitering our streets you ask them what do we do say it depends on which which company i have five companies uh, i'm the ceo of this what do you do well we are into logistics what do you mean logistics logistics is like saying i'm studying science what do you do I'm into real, real estate. What do you know about real estate? Well, my uncle gave me one land to sell. You are not into real estate. Are we together now? I am this. I'm into that. I'm, I'm, I'm one of, in fact, by the grace of God, it's just that I don't want to talk too loud. I'm one of the top fashion people in this, this town. Who knows you? Who has patronized you? We make too much noise, whereas our results cannot match it. 
it is better for people to have a low expectation over you and then your results shock them than to make so much noise i can cook for one thousand people just give me this money i know what i'm saying is it cooking what is there in cooking then the food is smelling smoke all around burnt the meat burnt the food burnt everything packaging is good but have content have content build your mind buy the truth buy books buy materials i can spend the whole night teaching on the mind focus on changing your mind brothers and sisters and i promise you your life will change don't don't get into this pressure of living a fake life if all you have today is gary take it with honor use your 2000 naira buy a bible buy a book read pay for seminars you are buying the truth you are investing your destiny yes i know you have one trouser the trouser is torn around sew it with honor let them laugh at you a day will come you will own a clothing line all these things somebody just finishes a graduate you are moving around when you are going somewhere you go and change ten thousand naira and um, you have twenty thousand savings you change twenty thousand to five five hundred naira new note and you just go and dash and say well this is part of what god has done now you take look at the fake life social media has helped us to live very fake lives now there are positive aspects of it people snap near cars that are not their own they stand near a plane and snap they do all kinds so you don't even know it's better for you to know where you are so that you can rise there is a way you live a life that is too fake you don't even know that is fake again are we together you go to a house that is not near your house stand in front of the gate just put one leg and snap and then you go around now let me tell you what you, every time you create expectations that are higher than your capacity what you do is that you cause men to expect more from you are we together yes packaging without mental upgrade will always lead to frustration there are many pastors i love them i love the body of christ but you see a lot of people this guy will wear suit you think if you match the ground every wheelchair will stand up wear the suit wear tie wear all kinds of things pocket square all kinds of things bible ipad another book one protocol one for whoever it is that is standing by the side and you hold the mic one scripture you can quote one prayer you can pray man of god i don't know what to do about my finances as well god will attend to your needs look at the answer he's giving no knowledge of the principles of the kingdom yet you are the first to spend all your money so every you go to a meeting like this you come for koinonia stand outside and snap and use it to publicize your church you say come there is an overflowing abundance of people there are four members in your church it's not a thing to laugh at god is going to lift you you see people live all kinds of fake lives you don't know what is true and what is not true you are selling rappers it's all right but you go somewhere to one big boutique and snap yourself and say me in one of my shops you are lying it is the truth that sets free brothers and sisters not everybody dances to a fake life there are people who can see you and say i know you are starting but i'm taking the risk to lift you and support you are we together yes say i receive grace to work on my mind first ladies some of you spend all kinds of hilarious amount on hair on rings on clothes on hands you are creating an impression are you working no well how much is your salary per month it just comes as as a favor opens up doors for me anyhow so why are you living like that a restaurant that everybody there is a ceo you too you enter there number one you have not grown to that level so you don't even know that they don't call people the see with every lifting life teaches you the protocol of that realm 
when you force yourself into that realm you don't know the protocol of that realm if you have truly gotten to that level let me tell you the justice system of god is such that you will learn the day you can get to a restaurant where it's a buffet you will already know the precepts of that level be careful let me speak to some of us here who are leaders business leaders ministry people be careful as you attempt to lift people don't be so sympathetic about people that you lift them beyond their current level of dealing with god in a bid to help them you will expose them to dimensions they are not prepared for and it will destroy them sometimes you see people crying somebody just comes to you and says ah, i have a crusade eh? money is not coming say really oh yeah bring your account two million god is trying to teach him how to trust you destroy that lecture you gave the guy two million. Do you know what he's going to say? He will arrow. He was begging you, crying, but he will arrogantly stand before his members and say, "If you have ever doubted that there's oil on my head, go and check my bank account." Now that guy has not learned anything. Most people will use your help to prove that they had faith. They didn't know you helped them. Me, I don't pray. I don't pray. Things just happen in my life. I'm, I'm like that. I mean, all this. I don't waste my time praying because you, somebody's. You have been reaping somebody's seed. The day your farm will be open, you will see that uh, what they call that thing shifting cultivation that you have to allow a farm for it because you have allowed it bush fallow, what they call all those agri terminologies. You have to sit down for years tilling the ground you left for a long time. Corporate success is good for the organization but dangerous for individuals. Because you won't know who is really producing the result. See, they, let, let, me, let me encourage you, everyone, especially the workers in this ministry. We share our success. Now, I've taught in this ministry the principles of shared dominion. If somebody says today, Apostle, you are very anointed, we share it. I'm not anointed alone. There were people who made that possible. However, be careful lest you hide in the midst of crowd to say we are moving forward. Are you moving forward? That's the danger with things like group work. Ten people can do an assignment. Only two are serious. The remaining two will sleep. All of them will get nine over ten. And the other person will come and say, Kai, God is faithful. You are not smart. You are not learning. In the office, they give assignments. And they come and give everybody bonuses. And you are rejoicing, yet you are not growing. Enjoy corporate success. But vet yourself to make sure you are an active contributor. That your input is in that equation of success. How is the mind renewed? Quickly. If this is what we can take, we we'll just stop here. How is the mind renewed? We need to learn how to transform the mind. Number one. A recognition. Transformation starts with a recognition. That your old ideas cannot take you to your destiny transformation of the mind starts with a recognition that your old ideas the ideas that are currently resident within your mind are not sufficient to take you to the place of destiny that's the first key a recognition that something i know now is limiting me or something i do not know is limiting me that's the first step whoever can recognize that that is my place of destiny but as it is where i am now cannot take me there leads us to point number two the second key to the renewal of the mind is access to new ideas access to revelation access to useful information you can't think the way you are thinking now and rise as a pastor as a businessman as a career person as a student as a family man as a wife as a mother as a child no your thought process thus far is what brought you where you are so you have to think i look at my life today and i look at it maybe five six seven eight years i look at the things i knew and i'm surprised that i could even rise with that level of knowledge because compared to what i know now i was in total ignorance i probably would have argued then but truly speaking i would say i was in total ignorance understanding the systems of god now i'm in shock that's why i glorify god because i see his mercy all the way
there is something you can know that will take your church to the next level there is something koinonia can know now that can open us to a new season see leaders learn this you are a pastor businessman leader whatever you are listen to me your ministry or organization will rise and stop at the level of thinking of the leader are we together it is it is it is a very sincere statement you are a ceo of a group that group will only rise to match your level of understanding and stop there because you are the chief legislator of that organization if i stop growing as a person spiritually intellectually otherwise koinonia will rise to the level of my understanding and stop there we will only be recycling knowledge so whilst god is granting me grace to feed you with truth i myself am a student of higher mantles greater graces uncommon leadership and i mean it uncommon leadership you know sometimes when i sit down and read these books or watch these people i sit down and i try to say my god what constructed their understanding to be this flawless access to new ideas number three repetition of the ideas in your mind until conviction is established the third way to renew your mind is not just to have access to ideas but those ideas must be repeated until conviction is established faith comes by hearing and hearing that you heard it once does not mean you have built conviction there are messages i've listened to more than 1500 times one message god is my witness and i lie not the goal is not just to hear i have understood the principle i wish we had time i would have taught you how the mind works right generally speaking there are two dimensions to the mind there is what we call the conscious mind and what we call the subconscious mind the conscious part of the mind is the area that connects with your senses your physical senses that's where you do your thinking that's where you do your reasoning that's where you do your analysis unfortunately that's not where your behavior comes from that's not where your convictions come from that's where your intention comes from the conscious part of your mind then there is the subconscious part of your mind that's the seat of conviction whatever enters your subconscious mind must manifest in your life so the bible says in genesis chapter 11 right when you read from verse 5 and 6 the bible says god came down nimrod the son of cush gathered a people and said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens let us make a name for ourselves and then the bible says that god said in verse 5 can you give it to us please genesis 11 and verse 5 genesis 11 and verse 5 the bible says that god said there were, he came down to see and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded hold on they had not started building they were mobilizing themselves but the bible says god came down to see the city that has already been built once you build it in your mind you build it in your life so says god himself verse 6 and the lord said behold the people is one and they all have one language and this they begin to do listen and now nothing everybody say nothing who is talking here god nothing will be restrained from them not which they intended which they imagined to do it first happens in your mind i saw these days years ago the mental level i am now the physical reality is not yet the reflection tomorrow will tell you my thought process what you are we are enjoying today was yesterday's thinking are you hearing what i'm saying now your family is a reflection of the thinking of your father and mother it's a reflection of the ideas your life now is a reflection of your ideas listen the subconscious mind there's something very powerful about it the subconscious mind does not know the difference between reality and imagination wow it cannot distinguish between what is imagined and what is real 
in the world of your subconscious mind whether you are looking at this or imagining it it interprets it as real that's why the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or because your imagination is a request your imagination is a request you are crying out to your destiny to come so the bible says philippians chapter 4 please give us verse 8 philippians chapter 4 verse 8 thank you jesus finally brethren in light of the fact that your destiny is a sum total of your thought pattern he said whatsoever things are what true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise what's the assignment don't just pray think on these things think on these things think on these things think on these things brothers and sisters i think on many things when i look at you i think of how you will be not how you are now no that's why there's nobody i look at and conclude over no no matter how you are when i look at you my eyes are seeing your today but my spirit my mind has captured your tomorrow i look at my life today and I've already seen when the nations will come and worship. Ah. Our hearts, our prayer is to see the nations worship. Our desire and our prayer is to sing your praise from the ends of the earth that with one mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our hearts and our desires is to see nations worship no leader enters a future he cannot see son of man what seest thou businessman what seest thou my brother my sister tonight what do you see i see pain in my family i see divorce i see the fact that i've been delayed be careful you are programming your mind to reproduce that hallelujah are we together pray in one minute pray in one minute and say lord change my vision i have allowed life to give me wrong perceptions and i'm programming my life wrongly pray pray we'll soon stop but i want you to get this law it's important what you see your perception he looked at a weak man Gideon and he said I see a mighty man of value brothers and sisters since I was nothing and I didn't have anything I saw a great destiny that's what I see I know what I see in the glory and the power I see miracles, that's my life. I'm a sign and wonder. It's in the glory and the power. I see miracles, signs and wonders.
years ago, years ago, I would go to our boys' quarters in the night alone. I never knew my mother was watching me. I would get a stick and I was seeing these days. I was preaching. I would stand. I would just go imaginary in the air and say in the name of Jesus, rise up from the wheelchair. That's what I was doing. And I would feel the anointing because you see your, the Holy Spirit works through your mind. I told you your mind doesn't care whether it's imagination or not. Job said the thing I feared most came upon me. I thought about it. Accident, accident until a car killed me. All I see is a great destiny. That's what I see for myself. All I see is koinonia rising from glory to glory. I never see bomb blast. I never see trouble. I see myself as a leader over men of influence. I have never seen impossibility in my life. And I'm not just, I'm not joking. I said this when I could not buy a shoe. It's in the glory and the power. I see miracles, signs and wonders. I'm in the glory. And the power I'm a living miracle And a sign of wonder Listen You must stop looking down on yourself Many of you say Why do the heathens rage And the people imagine a vain thing That's why they execute it You imagine a vain thing You imagine failure I am nothing. I graduated with third class. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I can't speak well. I am too old. Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. We are talking about the God of heaven. The one who can change people. Listen. Listen. Someone asked me one day and said, Apostle, God has blessed you so much with gifted people. How do you get them? And I told him, I see them. I see a service conducted by music ministers who as individuals are international figures. You have been allowing the devil plant nonsense in your mind. There are ladies here, whereas there is Esther in you, Vashti is calling you. Your destiny is calling you, but your yesterday is pulling you back. Remember you failed. You failed jam five times. What is the definition of a failure? Then you submit to it. The moment you submit to it, you destroy yourself. Listen, every great man is a man who changed his mind. Literally. Right from the time I was having bread, bread, I will... I will cut the bread and put granite in the middle. I knew that a day will come I will feed nations. Ask Ejimi. We had a song. Ask and I'll give the nations to you. Oh Lord. That was our song. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will sing. Your God as it rises on night. to the heart of kings i saw myself i knew that there was an anointing every apostle was connected to kings i found it from scripture and i said no there is a mantle upon my life there are people here from our first crusades we will go and greet kings go and greet the kings in the land it was a seed listen tomorrow will never appear till you call it you will call it your mind is a fruitful part of your destiny. The Holy Spirit is crippled. If your mind says yes, no demon can say no. Believe me.
Hallelujah. Listen. The Lord gave me a very great testimony. I think it was day before yesterday or yesterday. Something happened. And um, it's something I had seen in my spirit. I had seen in my mind. And I would not see it physically. And then the Lord gave me a very big miracle. When it manifested and I looked at it, it was exactly what I had seen in the spirit. And I said, this God, believe him. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to teach you the law of faith. I thought we would have more time. There are many laws to teach you. Brothers and sisters, when you activate these things, by next week when we are done, I'm going to spend the night before next week praying all the oils that will be used. I will lie down and pray on it. When we are done, that oil, as it comes on your head, you will activate systems. My, my, listen, my brother, my sister, it will shock you. This life you see, this life you see is a living miracle. It's a product of understanding. This is what dominion is. It's not guesswork. I saw myself walking in the anointing. I saw it. I saw shadows killing the sick. I saw it. It's not some vain nonsense imagination. I believe it. The only audience in my vision. Yet I pulled it down. And it will cause nations to see it. You are the first to live in your future. And then I speak it. Lord it will happen. I will stand before kings. They will come. Gentiles. I saw a ministry. That was zero. Zero death. Zero death. Owing no man nothing as a ministry dead or alive. I saw it. Where did the money come from? Your mind. There is nobody giving any guarantee anywhere. There are people frowning. My uncle didn't give me ten naira. Nobody's uncle promises him anything. Leave all those dependence, careless dependence. Everything comes from above. It comes through men, not from men. From God, through men to you. Men are not your source. They are channels. It comes from God. We are going to pray. Is someone angry? Are you seeing how you have authorized? I've only taught you four laws. Some of you have missed it in relationships. Some of you have missed it. Your gift is not speaking. Some of you mediocrity. Just these four laws alone are enough to open your destiny. See, God instructed me to teach you this series because God wants to roll away shame. Shame. He has taken all the pain. You've taken all the lamentation. You've taken all the disappointment. You've taken all my sorrow. You have taken all my sadness. You've taken all limitations. Taking all the pain, you've taken all the shame. You have been very yours. The highest praise to the of your family members would have been had they known these laws they destroyed relationships and it has grounded them some of them the last time they worked was 1997 no door open till today sincere well-meaning believers but they have not understood the systems of the kingdom nobody is born with understanding you buy the truth i want you to lift your voice and prophesy i found my way i found my way 
standpoint of these laws I engage them I receive grace lift your voice and pray grace grace to engage these laws grace to engage these laws Hallelujah. You know that song, right? That Nathaniel Basi song. Just sing it once. I want us to sing it. Let the devil know that we're singing. Listen, 
I know our time is gone, but let's just pray for two minutes. I want you to forget where you are now. Forget what you cannot eat now. I want you to see a bright future. Draw from that future and start prophesying. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. Say back and forth from the heaven higher. No devil stops me. In the name of Jesus. I want to add one last prayer. Our time is gone. Listen, we are going to pray. There is a spirit that can destroy all these things you have had. It's called the spirit of fear. Apostle, will it work? Are you joking? The laws that founded the universe, these are not scientific laws. They were not invented. No, the very laws. Listen, God told Job in chapter 38 verse 33, he says, knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth. We are not talking about what we are guessing. These are not cunningly devised fables. These are the secrets. The secrets, age-long secrets. I like you right now to challenge the spirit of fear. Call it by name and drive it from your life. I open the door and I ask you out of my life. Out of my life. God has not given me the spirit of fear. That goal is achievable. That dimension of anointing is accessible. That dimension of ministry. That dimension of business. It is doable. I believe. I agree with heaven. I agree with my dreams. I challenge with your pity. I aim high. I aim for the stars. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to be small. I contend for kingdom influence. I contend for kingdom success. I pray the laws of the spirit. And with them I possess treasures. Treasures that are not affordable to men. men. Please lift your hands. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I cast away the spirit of fear now. I cast it now. I'm seeing it. That's why I'm praying. I cast away the spirit of fear now. I cast you by the God of heaven. I cast away the spirit of fear now. I decree and declare impartation of confidence may it come upon you now the bible says to cast not away your confidence for it has a great recompense of reward i decree and declare that everything that attempts to make you feel you will end up like those that you have seen fall i challenge that voice now i challenge that voice now right now in the name of jesus I release fresh dreams. I release fresh visions. Fresh expectations. Where you have watered down God's expectation because of fear, I lift it back to God's standard. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare that as you apply, we have done four. There are many more. 
but these four I release grace upon them and I anoint this laws to work for you I anoint this laws to work for you they will work like magic for you in the name of Jesus beginning from tonight not tomorrow begin to command testimonies from this law open doors from this law restorations from this law breakthroughs from this law anybody that will make you doubt this laws may God take them far from you to break every chain 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 is to break every chain break every chain break every Listen, brothers and sisters, we're about to pray, but I plead with you in the name of the Lord to believe this mystery, as simple as it looks, and you will watch the wonder in your life. Stop focusing on physical things. You will cheat yourself a thousand times. Nothing on earth has the ability to stand on its own. If anything on earth stands, there is a force keeping it. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen, the type of sword that kills the enemies is not as important when Jericho is down. Anything can bless you when the realm of the spirit is down. Listen. I have seen anointed men and women of God. People I know love God with all their heart. But they can never prevail in ministry. Because they have been fighting physically. They do everything. And sometimes you wonder and say, ah, look how great this brother is. Look how great this sister is. Is there no ear on earth to hear what you carry and honor you for it? Hallelujah. Listen. People make all kinds of gifts for me, as you can imagine. People make all kinds of gifts. And sometimes I see what people do, and I'm shocked. I say, life is so unfair. How can this brother, this sister be this gifted, and yet be begging? And you see someone come out from somewhere, and priesthood goes before him, and in one week his life has changed. They can even be sarcastic. Priesthood will make them take life for granted. There is a system of ease that God wants to bring to your life. Please hear me. There are families here listening. You have done all you know. Why don't you allow God? Allow the ark come into your home tonight. And let it go around Jericho. Allow the ark come into your life tonight. Let it go around Jericho. And you will watch that which was dead come alive by itself. Hallelujah. I was told recently about a young man. Very nice, wonderful young man who loves God. Everything you know in life, including good things, fight him. And recently, I think something happened. They stole a phone. And the person who stole the phone was within the vicinity of the guy. And he was sitting down. The man kept the phone there. And police came and took two of them together. I got a text the person sent me a text and when he narrated everything that was happening I usually don't call people back 
but i was touched i called him i said where are you he said apostle look at my life nothing works i said how did you get to the police station he said that um, they found somebody with phone and carried him you think that's ordinary maybe that young man breakthrough is coming for him another thief from somewhere steals comes to drop a phone close to you does the police not have common sense to probe and they carry you together because there is a spirit coordinating this it looks like coincidence someone just falls from a chair just a little chair like this and all of a sudden one side of him paralyzes it's a lie it's not that chair that paralyzed him be smart people fell from trees plucking mangoes and they were fine they cleaned their hands and carried the mango and went away you fall from a small chair and paralyzes your leg no a, a coincidence navigated the chair was just the scapegoat it's not about the chair tonight we are going to pray before i begin to minister you are going to say satan so you have deceived me through this situation i've been focusing on the situation whereas it is never really about the situation it is about jericho attempting to stand and challenge me i thought it was all about job i thought it was all about marriage i thought it was all about children i thought it was all about my background now i'm learning that anything would have still caused the same problem provided jericho is standing there but joshua gather the priests gather the priests listen look at me i want you in the mind of your spirit look at that job issue look at that issue and say I will no longer be deceived you are not the problem the problem is jericho it is never that the business cannot work it is never that helpers cannot come once jericho is still standing here nothing can go in nothing can come out lift your voice and begin Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Self tell me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout it one more time in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I challenge. I challenge the spirits. The spirit. The ordinances. The ordinances. The spiritual forces. The spiritual forces that are responsible. That are responsible for the physical tragedies in my life. Physical tragedies by the mystery of the blood. By the mystery of the blood. I declare. I declare that victory must be established tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Rotor, 
Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible tells us, listen, that we have a high priest and that that high priest is a man. The man, Jesus, he qualifies to be a priest, not the spirit, Jesus. The man occupying a priesthood that is higher than the Aaronic priesthood. The Bible says his priesthood is of a better covenant after the order of Melchizedek. A priesthood with no beginning, a priesthood with no end. That there is that eternal priesthood of Jesus. Listen carefully. We are talking about very deep foundational issues here. Jesus, the man, the priest that took his blood. The Bible tells us that he went to the heavenly tabernacle and poured his blood upon that altar once and for all. Once and for all. The advocacy of that priesthood is superior. Listen. Every enchantment and every divination on earth needs the sun to walk or the moon the bible says thou listen without the sun and the moon if god withdraws the sun and the moon every cause every altar dies immediately because every other priesthood on earth or cultic depends on the power of the sun or the moon Are we together and so the bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight you will not need it the moon the sun and moon they are important but i'm introducing something jehovah god himself will be the light that sponsors your altar the same way listen listen that men can say we will do the sacrifice by 12 p.m when there is a full moon and they stand and manipulate the the they use geometry and everything to tap the powers of the sun and the moon and god says these things are inferior i come with another priesthood my own self the son of righteousness i am the light are we together i want you to be tired of what is happening in your life and family I tell you the truth when we begin to pray and I begin to minister many of you will see cheap victories cheap victories. amen this is when you will know that this thing is not just about physical efforts do you know brothers and sisters listen let me teach you something for as long as you keep focusing on individual physical problems your frustration continues i can tell you all of them are sponsored by a central force hear me all of them the same electricity is causing this fan to run the same electricity is causing the mic to work if you want a shutdown off the source of the power you can destroy the mic the phone will still work that's what we have come to do tonight a total shutdown then you will find out it was never a financial issue you will find out it was never a health issue it was never a promotion issue it was an altar issue it was an ordinance issue pray one prayer before i start ministering lord visit the foundation of every challenge in my life and my family lift your voice and pray everyone that asks can receive it lord visit the foundation why is ministry not working why is my spiritual life dying why am i not growing in the anointing what is the mystery oh god Lord, why the circle of tragedies, one tragedy after another, 
one tragedy. Alléluia. 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 Please just, just be silent for a moment. I want to start ministering now. Let's just, the Lord is giving me instructions. Just, just be silent. Stand where you are. Um, something is happening inside, outside, everywhere. The Lord is showing me something very strange. Now, um, let me just describe what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something that looks like um, this thing people wear. What's the name? This thing that looks like a um, lady's thing that men wear. That, that looks like a... Yes, that, that thing. That's what I'm seeing on many people. And the Lord is telling me on everyone that I see that thing in. There is a very strange deliverance because that I'm hearing hidden glory. And I want to pray. Please, you don't, don't shout, don't do anything. Just let me flow. You start bringing those people out. I'm going to pray now for those group of people. I'm seeing it. Because I'm seeing that those people, no matter what you do, your glory is never seen. You will struggle and try. But nothing ever happens. Now in the name of Jesus... I stretch my hands just silence everywhere father I'm seeing this in the realm of the spirit and tonight is a miracle service from overflow one two three and the main auditorium and those online anyone here that is a victim of this that I see by the power of priesthood I come as an act bearer an envoy tonight and Lord I decree and declare let there be deliverance now right now right now right now bring them out i prophesy i decree and declare many of you will feel that physical fire upon your head i'm praying now physical fire coming upon your head let them go let them go i command liberty they must go i come with the rod of a higher priesthood i decree and declare they must go free Restore their glory now. Jacos kapatariata ente keta kaskotariata ji. Brakato katabalia. Hidden glory. That's what I hear in the spirit. Hidden glory. Hidden glory. There is glory, but covered in Jericho. Covered by the fence of Jericho. Pakapata kato sabra katalia. Everywhere, inside, outside. I'm praying now. Please just be sensitive. Let's, let's do what God is directing us to do. Tonight there must be total victory. Total victory. Now I'm praying for families. The anointing of God will come on individuals. But it is for families. It will come on you. Once that anointing comes on you now. Know that God is visiting your family. Lord I pray now. I release the sword the sword of the Lord in the name of Jesus to every family if there is a family here whose glory has been buried nobody rises where are they I decree and declare now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost Parakata. I don't know what altar manipulated the glory of any family here but in the name of Jesus the son of the living God in the name of Jesus I command now by the power of the Holy Ghost let there be emancipation emancipation for every family hidden glory hidden glory the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and then we beheld his glory The Lord is still touching people. The Lord is still touching people. That's why you came. You have done the listening. Let me pray now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Something serious is going to happen here now. 
now i want to pray a very serious prayer the lord is leading me to pray this prayer i just had in my spirit altars of poverty hold on just keep your hands lifted father i'm praying you spoke to my ears altars of poverty if there is any family here in an ordinance shekes katash under that cause nothing works there is nothing you do physically to be able to bless the family and support the family that works in the name of jesus i declare right now by the fire of the holy ghost let there be deliverance now by the fire of the holy ghost by the fire of the holy ghost altars of poverty everywhere overflow one overflow two overflow three online if there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose family is under this siege i decree and declare now your emancipation comes tonight for all of you in front here i speak to the spirits you know my voice in the name of jesus and at the count of three you let them go now one two three go go out of them now out of every one of their destinies out of their lives Shekatos kabariata i invoke a priesthood higher than any ordinance upon their lives release their families now release their destinies now You know the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing a vision now you know how it used to be in a slave market that you sell a physical person and collect money that's what i'm seeing in the spirit like people with only trousers sold and money this is exchange of destinies i believe that this is very prophetic let me be honest i know some of you may not believe it but the destiny you are living is not your own a king slaughtered his son so that he will remain alive there are men that exchange destinies they they a king carried his future and said child the death i'm supposed to die you die it there are people like that the destiny god allocated for you you know this is not your life your dreams and your vision show something else in the name of jesus play now lift your hands i declare the spirits that exchange and merchandise the destinies of men by the power of the holy ghost at the count of three if there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose destiny has been manipulated i command now at the count of three be set free one two three be free now be free now be free now everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me hallelujah oh sephia 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 like sephia i'm hearing a name sephia who is that please let's let's hurry up there is a lot to do i want us to settle down really pray for the sick sephia who is that her eyes her eyes say her eyes 
Your name is Sophia. How about you, madam? The Lord will locate the person. I'm standing here and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord touching the person God wants me to speak to. All right. I'll pray for all of you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I deliver this lady now. This lady on red. I command that spirit that has tied down your life and your glory be gone. For you, it's over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be set free right now. Sophia, the Lord bring liberty. Liberty now. I command those altars to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ the anointing of the Holy Ghost bad luck bad luck I take it out of your life the spirit of I'm seeing a lot of bad luck I take it out of your life now release their destinies now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah there is a lady a physical person appeared to you in the room this is a woman whose face you know like a relative physically where is that person please someone uh, you were not dreaming appeared to you and there was a conversation from that day your life never became this please don't be ashamed i want to pray for you please don't waste our time we have a lot to do the lord is ministering to me someone appeared i'm not saying you were in a dream this thing is somewhere you had a conversation with someone physical who is that person i want to pray for you please when you find that person let the person come quickly. Who is Ola? I'm hearing a name, Ola. Ola. I don't know if that's the full name, but there's Ola. O-L-A. There's someone with that name, Ola. Please don't come out if it's not your name. Who is this? Huh? Your name is Allah. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Rejoice. Breakthrough has come to your family. This lady. I'm, I'm Kai. Look at the evil and the witchcraft I see over this lady's family. All these people are, please help me find out. Why are they here? All of them, their names are Allah. Interesting. Come. That lady with cap. Come. Your salvation has come. Come. This lady with, lift your hands. Over now over now over now calm down madam come i'm seeing what happened yes a woman appeared to me that it shall be never would be able physical physically are you seeing what i'm saying look at this when was that last year may she appeared face to face and tell me it shall never will be able to no matter how whatever you take that you are not feeling fine and from that hold on from that day something started moving in your body it will move and come to your back and come to your chest area look at this are, are you seeing a swelling here you are seeing this a woman appears to her i prophesy to someone here jakas koto parakatia anyone in fraternity with the realm of darkness over your life i curse those people now i curse those people now i curse those people now by the anointing of the holy ghost madam i deliver you now in the name of jesus christ be set free now in the name of jesus the living and the dead don't have anything in common in the name of jesus the lord is speaking to me there are some of you all you see is dead people all you see is no matter a bulk of your sleep is encounter with dead people i'm prophesying lift your hands the anointing of the spirit is coming on such people now in the name of jesus if there is anyone here in strange encounters with the dead by the fire of the holy ghost i command a separation now the spirit of hades i speak to you the spirit of Hades, Christ has triumphed over you. Oh, death, take away your sting. Take away your sting.
Hallelujah. There are a number of you here. I presume you are all Ola, including this gentleman on wheelchair. That's your son. That's your brother. What happened to him? What happened to him? Accident. Since when? 2015. And he paralyzed you. You can't move now. Oh dear. We are going to pray for the sick. But I want to pray for Ola now. Just, just stand. Bring for me the person. I'm seeing like a sword coming on one of you now. Aside from this lady, there is, there is an anointing coming on one of you. Let me speak to that one person right now. I'm seeing a closed door. This is someone's destiny. It looks like I'm holding the air, but I'm seeing that I'm holding a padlock in the spirit. Whose destiny is that? Among these people standing. Open, 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 open now. I command that destiny. Open. Open now. Open now. Open now. Open now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You came alone? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry, I'll pray for the sick, sir. If, I'm, if I don't talk, are you a last, sir? No, don't, don't come out until I ask you. This is witchcraft. You would have died since last year, June. Yes, yes sir. It's God that kept you. I will pray for you. I've seen your case already. If I don't pray for you, in three months, you will not be walking again. This is stroke. What is wrong with you? Yes, sir. All my body. This is what I'm saying. I'm seeing three months and you're on the bed not to rise again. We have to pray. This is witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Come, my dear, this lady. I'm seeing a very beautiful lady in the physical, in the realm of the spirit. I'm seeing an old woman. Hold my hands. What fellowship. The exchangers of destiny. I hold the hands of this lady. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a restoration. A very beautiful girl in the physical. But I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Be free now. In the name of Jesus. I command the power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. I command that your destiny be restored. Your destiny be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you standing here. My, my brother, this gentleman, come. What's your name? What do you do? What do you do? I'm a printer, sir. You are a what? Printer, printer. Nothing is working in your life. I need to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I break this embargo I see upon your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. This row, I'm seeing deliverance. Chicken feather. That's what I'm seeing. Chicken feather. This is an ordinance over a family. Just this row. I stretch my hands now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Kabaroko to sobaria talikata. Jakaske barikato siyanapata. Let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Mama, I know that it's not time to pray, but I want to pray for you. Please come, madam. You came alone. Let her come. You came alone. Yes, so one of my say, son friend brought me here. When you are talking, everything you say is just about as if you are. Where, where did you together. come from? I come from uh, Samaru. From but, Samaru. Um, Basawa. No problem, Mama. Yes, I, I want to pray for you because of something I've Thank seen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say after me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The suffering. The suffering. The sorrow. The in my life, in my life must, end. must end. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I will eat. I will eat the fruit of my labor. The fruit of my labor. Father, by her confession, Amen. let her be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that captivity is over. I pray for all of you now. In the name of Jesus, my dear, don't be embarrassed. Eh? Be careful with men. Come. I'm seeing somebody really destroying your life. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? You are here. We love you. We don't condemn people, but be careful. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. The deception and the wickedness 
of evil doers i pray for you now every captivity in our last family whether male or female as i stretch my hands over you i command that it leaves you now it leaves your family now i say it again it leaves you now it leaves your family now in the name of jesus for the last time now an anointing will come on you it leaves you now it leaves your family now in the name of jesus christ god bless you please go back to your seat go back to your seat go back to your seat hallelujah now lift your hands everybody gentlemen when it's time to pray for the sick we'll pray for you huh? just be patient please help him so that he doesn't strain himself all of you lift your hands one scripture and there is fire to deliver the oppressed now why are you here my dear you are with him oh is your daddy what okay since then there is something that has been working on his body like you had an snake. accident yes sir okay and what happened and since then something has been working on his body on his stomach like snake at times the thing will are you seeing what i'm saying so it was never about accident you see accident was just the condition that made this happen i saw three months stroke hitting this man and him not standing up from the bed again but the lord would destroy it eh? just be patient we want to pray now let me show you one scripture and then we'll pray exodus chapter 15 quickly please 6 to 11 exodus 15 we are going to do a quick walk we need to cast out wicked devils out of lives and families thy right hand O lord is become glorious in power thy right hand O lord has dashed into pieces the enemy next verse to 11 and in the greatness of thy excellency thou has overthrown them that rose up against thee thou sentest forth thy wrath which consumed them as stubble and with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together the flood stood up right as an heap and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea to 11 the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil my lust shall be satisfied upon them i will draw up my sword my hand shall destroy them next verse thou didst blow with thy wind and the sea covered them they sank as lead in the mighty water who is like unto thee O god among the gods who is like unto thee glorious in holiness comma fearful in praises doing not delivering doing wonders that's what you're about to see now lift your hands he said i will pursue i will overtake my lust my desire will fall upon the people of god i want to pray listen deliverance is not just about falling down and rolling up and down is 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 bringing the anointing of the spirit to bring a parting a separation the bible says the river separated teeth and hither separation to allow you move i want to pray are you ready now remember that after they moved the seventh time it was a shout the healer a shout not just any shout a shout that was sent like a word and the bible says the walls of jericho fell down flat that shout is what you are about to do but let me issue a command in the spirit in the name of jesus christ the one whom i serve and whose i am in the name of jesus i declare over every force in the spirit the covenants and the ordinances of darkness that have held the lives of god's people as they shout this shout wherever they are i command those spirits he said when they hear my voice they will run out of their hiding i command not only an exposition but a total separation are you ready to shout jesus at the count of three one two three in the name of jesus i command that fire to fall every power every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment 
every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment go now go now go now every enchantment paparakato soto preketelekata every enchantment every enchantment be free now hold on hallelujah i usually don't do this until i'm directed hallelujah i usually see pillars of fire standing by my left and right i just want to pass through you don't have to touch me except it is not god that has called this meeting if there is a force and a spirit it must be exposed as i pass you in the name of jesus thank you father i decree and declare right now by the anointing of the holy ghost every power every force every power every force every power every force you must go now now by the anointing of the holy ghost in the name of jesus as i pass you that anointing like fire is coming upon you to set you free be free now free now free now free now in the name of jesus be free now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ those of you outside lift your hands lift your hands i'm going to pass here right now the anointing of the spirit is going to begin to come upon you are you ready now thank you jesus you don't have to touch me just just allow me pass be careful be careful father in jesus name let it be over now there is fire now that fire is moving all across now in the name of jesus ordinances be broken now i'm seeing fire just around here where my hands are in the name of jesus let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now be free now let it be over now 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 in the name of jesus christ be free now in the name of jesus as i'm passing close to you an anointing is causing every power let them go the spirit of the lord is telling me to stand here right now in jesus name let there be deliverance now let there be deliverance now from every force of darkness every force of every force of darkness be free now i came here because i know that there are so many of you look the crowd in this place i want to pray for you i'm standing here my god look at the oppression that i see just standing here i'm about to pray right now and from the front to the back from the left to the right i want all of you to shout jesus something is leaving people already are you ready now your destiny must be open please don't take it for granted bring them out now at the count of three overflow three one two three shake it be free now be free now in the name of jesus i command my god please help them jesus christ look what is happening here from the front to the back right now anyone here under the siege of darkness be free now be free now help them be free now lift your hands overflow three i'm praying for you are you ready to shout jesus again there are many of you you try to move forward but the force keeps holding you as you shout jesus now you're going to see something leave you are you ready father all those who have been held captive, i declare that as they shout jesus let your fire of deliverance come upon them one two three i release you now i release you now I release you now go forward i release you now delay broken i release you now i release you now i release you now i release you now in the name of jesus hallelujah listen i'm going to pray for everybody 
but the lord is saying there are some of you here the call of god is upon your life but there are altars fighting you i'm about to release you oh god i'm seeing 17 one seven where are they oh god right now to the back where are they they have the call of god but an altar of darkness tying down their lives Mata soto kata. be free now hallelujah i'm going to pray for you look up please there are 11 of you the lord is saying it is you that you will use to help your family and the anointing that anointing of that joseph's anointing to distinguish you is coming on 11 people lord where are they to the back right to the back that anointing a destiny is rising no even if you are the last born i decree and declare let that anointing find you now let that anointing find you now the joseph anointing the joseph anointing that will cause you to save your brethren hallelujah please lift your hands overflow three it's not about falling down although there are several things happening here but i want you to just focus the last prayer i want to pray for you many of you will be surprised what happens to you listen i'm seeing keys like a key that was missing some of you were once you were destined for certain things and the devil veered off your life and as it is right now the treasure that god gave you you have lost it as i pray for you that restoration anointing is coming upon you some of you is anointings some of you is business connections lord where are they at the count of three let that fire come shout jesus at the count of three one two three receive that grace now restoration fire 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 shake up butter please open your mouth and begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray great grace great grace great grace great grace new season, new season. mama look at me it's over over forever over 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 it's going to use you the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ please everyone pray in the spirit. everyone pray in the spirit everyone pray in the spirit everyone pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit overflow one pray in the spirit hallelujah Praise the Lord. Overflow one, I want to minister to you now. Listen, please, I want you to believe everything. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands, all of you. There are some of you here, as I'm looking, I'm just seeing chains. I want to pray at the count of three. I didn't come to waste your time. Right now, that chain is going to leave people now. Anyone here under the sound of my voice, and there is a chain of darkness, overflow one. I declare at the count of three right now, let that chain be broken. One. I command that chain be broken now. Help them, please. Be broken now. To the back. Shakasko Pariata. Zato Kata. Be broken, broken. Fire is coming. I'm seeing fire moving across the crowd. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break every force, every yoke of darkness. 
Hallelujah. Are you pregnant? Come. I'm seeing an evil spirit. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go. By the anointing of the spirit. I release the destiny of this baby. You will not lose this baby. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help her. This lady. That lady praying in tongues. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace. For dreams and visions. The Lord is releasing it upon you. Pray for dreams and visions. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to walk across this crowd. Please. I just want you to release your faith. Release your faith and receive something now. As I walk through. I'm seeing altars. And they are living right now. Thank you Jesus. Father. Let there be deliverance right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Let that fire. As I move. Oh God. Let the angel of your presence move. Let there be deliverance. It is over. That's what the Lord says to you. Over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Over. 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 Shabbos Katai. Sheketis Kalabra Katoziata Kata. Over now. In the name of Jesus. Over. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It is over. Please believe. As I'm passing you, don't, don't worry. The anointing of God will locate you. Over now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be over now. Now, over your life. Let it be over. I'm seeing fire moving here like this. Who is that fire for? In Jesus' name, I stretch my hands. Let there be deliverance right now. Supernatural deliverance right now. Supernatural deliverance right now. Mama, be free. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural deliverance. Um, I'm seeing a circle here. And the Lord is saying, restoration of ministerial anointing. A circle. Lord, where are they? There are people here, at least four of you. I stretch my hands. Let the anointing locate you. The call for ministry. The call for ministry. The call. Parakato sedekatoshia. Enter. Enter that level. That's what I hear in the spirit. Enter. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is, is it victory or Victoria? I'm hearing a name like a victory or Victoria. Who is that? Please very quickly want to pray for the sick now. It's like you are wearing something like blue. Blue. Who is that person? What's your name, madam? Yes, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. You've been coming. Madam, look at me. God is going to change your story completely. Amen. I don't know you, but yes. the Lord is saying he's bringing breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Hold my hands. Look at me. There is bad luck on your life, my dear. Good things come, but they never stay. And the Lord is saying to take it away right now. Be free. In the name of Jesus, I take away that spirit from your life. I set you free to move forward in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can we go in? Who is Victoria again? All the victories of Victoria be made free right now in Jesus' name. Can we go in from here? Everyone open your mouth and begin to pray. Prophesy. Say in the name of Jesus, I'm breaking forth spiritually. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's a new level for me. It's a new level for me. Enter a new dimension. Enter a new dimension now in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. I'm passing here now. There is an anointing. Move, move to the next level. I'm prophesying to everybody standing here within the vicinity of this anointing. Step into a new dimension. I release that grace now. I release that grace now. I stretch my hands. Everything that has held you down, let it leave you now. In the name of Jesus. My God, look at this. Are you seeing the legs are rotting completely in the name of Jesus be free now I command be free now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ look at me my dear go home and write it good news comes for me in 12 days Lord lose their destinies 
I'm standing here and I'm, there is an anointing. Let the destiny be open now. Open now. Shaba Sokos Kaliata. Embreketo Sasikete Likata. Jekros Kadabalako Tesiyanabahasiya. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm standing here and I'm hearing. I have called you. Accept my call. Accept my call. Accept my call. Accept my call. My call is upon your life. My call is upon your life. Stop fighting. My call is upon your life. That's what the Spirit of God is saying. My call is upon your life. Accept my call. My call is upon your life. My mandate is upon your life. My mandate is upon your life. That's what God is speaking. My mandate is upon your life. You cannot fight it. It's an ordinance decided from heaven. My mandate is upon your life. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Pastor Lawrence, speed, come. Where is, where is your wife to be? Come, come, two of you. I see a grace for speed. Lift your hands. Enter that dimension now. I release that grace. Speed to your life. The Lord is taking away delay. Go and mark it. You are entering a strange level. I see you climbing a ladder. And the Lord is saying it's time for your glory. It's time for your glory. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Collect that child quickly from Kenny. Collect that child. Speed. That grace. Collect that child. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing that grace. A new dimension of speed. Coming upon your life. A new level of speed. Coming upon your life. A new level of speed. Hallelujah. Mm. Hey, Jimmy, I'm seeing something for you. I'm seeing, please stand up. I'm seeing a bottle of oil and I'm seeing dollars. A bottle of oil and dollars. These two dimensions. The spirit and supernatural resources. That grace. The Lord is multiplying it. I'm seeing a bottle. A bottle of oil. A bottle of oil. The Lord is giving you a voice. Not only in the area of finances. But a strange demonstration of the spirit. Please be patient. We are going to pray for the sick. But tonight I, I perceive God is doing something strange. Young man come. Come. You and this guy. Two of you come stand. Step into a new dimension. New dimension. In the name of Jesus. You will never be the same. This guy. Just lift your hands where you are. Come. Enter a new level in the spirit. I release that grace now. Upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at people. And I'm seeing something rising from your stomach. To your throat. And the Lord is saying is the spirit of prophecy. Lord I'm declaring right now. It's happening to people right now. It will come upon you. Like a mantle. Prophecy. 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 From your belly from your belly prophecy i command those rivers makato sakata rivers of living water rivers 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 in the name of jesus christ this lady come you come quickly there is a grace the call of god is upon your life enter that dimension of his grace may the lord give you visitations 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 i bring you out of the cage that i see you in i bring you out of the cage i bring you out of the cage i see you inside a cage i bring you out of the cage in the name of jesus by fire i bring you out i bring you out ancestry will not fight you i bring you out of the cage 
in the name of Jesus Christ. We are soon going to pray for the sick. Where's, where's your wife? Where is she? The Lord is saying the powers will fight no more. Come. The powers will fight no more. 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 There are ordinances fighting this family. I see it in the spirit. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus, victory is established. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus. And he's stepping to a new level of the prophetic that has always been there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shalabarakatos. This usher lady. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will begin to see things before they happen. That's what the Lord is saying I should tell you. God is putting something in your eyes. You will see things. Shata sotosha. Marikatos kubariakata. You will see things before they happen. In the name of Jesus. With precision. With precision. And with accuracy. With precision. With precision. With precision. And with accuracy. When are these people that just married? This lady in welfare. Where is she now? You and your wife. Where are they? She's not around. Stand up. Let me pray for you on her behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for your mother. Let the Lord perfect her. But I'm praying for you. Something wants to take finances off your life. If I don't pray for you, I see great suffering in the days coming. It's like finance just dries up to the point that even your basic needs you cannot meet. But I cancel it right now. By the anointing of the holy spirit i cancel it right now in the name of jesus this fair lady an angel is pouring oil on your head that's what i'm seeing right now an angel is pouring oil on your head breakthrough step into a new dimension step into a new level in the name of jesus christ a new level a new level in the name of jesus christ wato where is she is she here I'm seeing a flag being raised up and the Lord is saying it's a new season. I'm seeing a flag being raised up in the spirit. The Lord is announcing you. I'm declaring, let that anointing come upon you. A new season. Let that flag be raised in the name of Jesus. Let that flag be raised. You will never, never be down. Let that flag be raised in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're going to pray for the sick. Let's just flow. God, you know, sometimes this is, this lady, you, come. Yes. Say for my shame. Say it for my shame. I receive double. The Lord is taking me to a new level and I receive it. I lay my hands upon you. In the name of Jesus, the grace for a new level. Is released upon you right now I command it so I declare it so in Jesus name I pray this gentleman you come confusion ends now in your life I lay my hands upon you I command confusion to end right now from your life in the name of Jesus confusion ends now over your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ confusion ends over your life in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing I will, I will prophesy generally but I'm seeing a family having the breakthrough of a new car and an anointing I'm, 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 it may not look like it's necessary for you but I'm seeing an anointing locating that family now this is this is a, a blessing of a car you will stand and testify i don't care whether the resources are there or not i stretch my hands let that anointing make it happen in the name of jesus christ let that anointing by the spirit 
make it happen right now help that person please let that anointing make it happen right now in the name of jesus make it happen cameraman come i want to pray for you look at me it will surprise you the kind of favor you will start walking in amen you believe what i'm saying lift your hands father let this brother drink of the grace for favor a fresh dimension a fresh dimension a fresh dimension of favor in the name of jesus christ this lady you come the lord is saying i'm rolling away reproach from your life everything that looks like reproach i lay my hands upon you i'm literally feeling like there are holes on your head and the anointing is going through i command reproach go and never return from her life in the name of jesus christ now we're going to pray for the sick please we're going to be very fast we're going to be very fast listen to me if you have any cancer related issue or barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three i will want to pray for you by myself otherwise overflow one um, i'm in the main auditorium i want you to come out over all the overflows just come to the front stand up stand up come to the front of your projector stands quickly please come to the front of your projector stands for god's sake not to embarrass you but look at this woman's leg look at this look at this doctor look at this is this sickness look at how the whole leg is rotting already please quickly you're sick in your body come quickly stand if the people cannot move just keep them where they are or bring them close so that you don't um are we together now we're going to pray it will be very fast because our time is gone we want to finish on time the devil is a wicked person for these kinds of oppression are we together there are so many people in overflow tree and uh, god will grant grace pastor lawrence come you will join them today when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you hallelujah father in the name of jesus by the corporate anointing we pray these people have come expecting to be healed expecting to be touched i pray that your anointing will visit them right now in the name of jesus overflow one overflow two overflow three let there be a release of the corporate grace right now in the name of jesus christ we're free now in the name of jesus christ what's wrong with you my dear Huh? fracture where how long where is the leg it can't move and your hand don't worry it's okay and your legs lord jesus please walk help this lady miracle, jesus. in the name of jesus walk my miracle here i release today. that anointing upon you right walk now my miracle, i correct your jesus. body now hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah Please stretch your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit. If they are still praying for you outside, just, just continue. Please, if your request is yet to come here, you can quickly wave it, wave it, and let the ushers have it and bring it here quickly. Stretch your hands, stretch your hands. By faith, believing that God will visit you. Don't, don't stretch your hands out of unbelief. If there are requests yet to come, please let them come here quickly. Please bring them quickly. Unto you that answers prayers, O God, shall all flesh come. Please pray. You are praying in the spirit. You are connecting. Lord, we are believing that we will not have to write this again. Be serious about it. Make sure you are connecting by faith. Shaka to kaparaka to barika tasi piada balaraba. 
Lord, arise in majesty. Arise in your power. Visit the case of people. Change impossible situations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jata prakato barakato barigete kete shelekete pranda kata barakatos eketo kaparuka tapariata ba Lord let this be the last time they will write this in the name of Jesus Christ let this be the last time they will write this in the name of Jesus let this be the last time shapa kata pakata 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 ente keto rakato shada pragada balada ba Lord we believe in you. Arise, O God of heaven. Arise, O God of heaven. Arise, O God of heaven. Visit your people. Arise, O God of heaven. Visit your people. Hallelujah. 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 Please respond with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, this is not a ritual. I stand on behalf of your people. Lord, these requests represent different dimensions of demonic Jerichos standing between them and the place of destiny. Father, as I step upon this, let this be symbolic of the ark going around Jericho. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen, you're going to shout jesus we're going to shout jesus seven times are we together as a prophetic act over this i'm going to guide you and you will shout it for every one shout let it represent one day going around jericho that at the seventh time we are agreeing together that no matter what the issue is if you don't believe you will never never see the salvation of god but for believers you'll be surprised father that you hearken to this prophetic act and oh god i stand leading your people as we shout that name the name of our high priest who has been exalted above the ironic priesthood above any kind of priesthood are you ready now i'll call the number and you shout jesus are you ready number one Number two. Jesus. Crumbling every mountain. Number three. Shabakoto Sopataya. Makrotoba. I tell you, I feel the fire of God as we're shouting this Jesus. Number four. Number five. Jesus. Number six. Jesus. I put an anointing on this seven shout. Let this be the shout that crumbles every mountain. In the name of Jesus. Number seven. Jesus. I decree and declare unto you prepare for strange testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ some of you even before you get to your homes or where you came from you will meet it waiting for you like a messenger in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift your hands let's take the prophecy and then we'll Every shame and reproach that has lingered in your life shame and reproach some of you is a pattern across your family members in the name of Jesus Christ I command shame and reproach be rolled over your life forever be rolled over your life forever be rolled over your life forever Hallelujah. 
I release over your life supernatural grace for speed in life. Supernatural grace for speed in life. Supernatural grace for speed in life. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that every garment he saw Joshua the high priest and he said to remove that garment. Every garment you are wearing that is attracting bad luck, attracting all kinds of things. The Bible says to give them a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I tear off that garment from your life. I tear off that garment from your life. Garment of reproach. I tear it off from your life. I tear it off from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare divine direction. Lord, what do I do? Where do I go to? Tonight, by dreams and visions and strange encounters, I provoke divine direction to come to your direction. In the name of Jesus Christ, Master, we have toiled all night, but I prophesy to you, go back this time around to the same place you failed. I anoint you, go and succeed. I anoint you, go and succeed. I anoint you, go and surpass the ordinary. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every door that has refused to open, your parents tried, it refused to open. The Bible says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, O ye not doors, ancient doors. I come against every ancient door and every gate. Swing open now in the name of Jesus. Swing open now in the name of Jesus. Swing open now in the name of Jesus. Every helper that must arise tonight, not tomorrow, tonight. Every helper ordained by God to rise up and come to your aid. I provoke favor towards you from them. I provoke favor towards you from them. I provoke favor towards you from them. Listen, whoever has what it takes to help you, in the name of Jesus, I direct their eyes to you. I say it again. Whoever has what it takes to help you, I direct their hearts to you. The same mystery that bound Jonathan and David, I declare, wherever your helper is, let it be as it were for Jonathan and David. In the name of Jesus Christ, all those in ministry here i prophesy to you a strange unction upon the work on your hands step into a new direction step into a new dimension in the name of jesus christ every family here that has cried that's all you've known to do cry and cry and say when will god deliver us i declare that your weeping has endured enough i prophesy your morning comes and with it joy in the name of Jesus Christ those writing exams let the mercy of God the mercy that helped those who went before you may that same mercy speak for you may that same mercy speak for you may that same mercy speak for you, speak for you. hallelujah there are people here you are sensing that your spiritual life is dry it's not like you don't love god but revelations they don't come as they used to come again sometimes you open your bible you cannot even read to pray you are sensing something is wrong it's like you know your spiritual life is under attack in the name of jesus christ i launch you to the new a new insight a new dimension of encounter a new dimension of encounter a new dimension of encounter the Lord will open your eyes to not only listen to teachings but to get the spirit of the message 
there are some of us the devil has cheated us by allowing our prayer altar go down in the name of jesus tonight let fire from heaven fall upon your prayer life let the quickening of the spirit fall upon your prayer life every wrong friend in your life whether you want them to go or not in the name of jesus for the sake of god's hand upon your life i separate you with them forever this night i separate you with them forever time wasters destiny wasters i cause a separation between you and them forever we're rounding up some of us here are plagued with the spirit of laziness spiritual laziness mental laziness physical laziness the bible says a lazy hand a slothful hand will that a one that deals with a slothful hand will beg he will become poor i decree and declare the spirit of productive diligence not just diligence the spirit of productive diligence i release it upon you right now are you ready to receive favor i will continue to pray favor upon your life until it works i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ even if you have seen favor in your life by the grace of god i release you to a new order of favor a new order of favor a new order of favor favor is not when you have money favor is when men arise by god to meet your needs if you have money and men don't come to your life you are not favored you are only prosperous you are not favored favor is when men arise that before you call they come they don't come and go they come and stay until the purposes of god have been achieved i call them now from the east the west the north and the south help us of your destiny may they appear before you in the name of jesus christ I don't know what personal request you desire from God but I release my faith with you and I declare that by miracle service may you will only return rejoicing over that issue in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here trusting God for a good job not just a job that you look like a slave a job with honor in the name of Jesus I agree with you between now and next miracle service may god bless you with a job that will launch you to a new dimension everyone in business here the god factor the favor factor the help factor the ebenezer factor i release it upon your business i release it upon your field of endeavor in the name of jesus christ the Bible says, where thou hast been rejected so that no man will pass through you. It says, I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I decree and declare, may your gates be continually open. Now, I want to pray a prayer that may be very strange for some of us. I want to pray that somebody will give you money. Listen hold on listen we are not money mongers this is not some canal thing there are some of you this is what you need you don't need advice you don't need counseling you just need help straight help i pray for you you will be surprised it will look like a dream i pray for you not a helper not access thank god for it but a helper that will come with the financial resource to help you i stretch my hands and i release it upon you in the name of jesus christ the anointing for miracles help that guy the anointing for signs the anointing for wonders whether you are called in ministry or not in the name of jesus may you carry it in your spirit from today
begin to reproduce a new order of signs and wonders and finally i pray for you whatever needs to be done for your family members to rejoice in the lord between now and the next 30 days whatever needs to be shaken whatever needs to be overturned in the name of jesus christ joy for your family members joy to your family members in the name of jesus christ let it be so in the name of jesus christ and for every for every worker here in the name of jesus christ after tonight rise with a new level of evidence become a testament not just a testament of a believer in christ but a testament that you belong to this spiritual family the grace to prove it let it be released upon you in the name of jesus whoever fights you may he find himself fighting himself whoever fights your family may they fight themselves they will point the knife at you and hurt themselves in the name of jesus christ dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye